Since Bob Stoops took over the storied Oklahoma program, every game has been a sellout, and tonight is no different. Over 72,000 fans have come to Owen Field on an absolutely perfect September evening. <laughs> and we welcome you to Big Play Saturday. Presented by Discover Card and T-Mobile. Tonight, the number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners with 108 years of football tradition face South Florida with six years under their belt, making their first national TV appearance and their first look at the Oklahoma Sooner Scooter. Hello again, everybody, along with Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin, and Charles and Bob Stoops revived this tradition here at Oklahoma. He did it with defense. Now, they've gotten better every year. The last two years, the defense have been pretty salty, but this year just might be the best ever. And you know Bob Stoops isn't ready to commit to that just <laughs> yet, but his players are. They think that three to four weeks down the road, they'll be as good as any Sooner defense has ever played, and they're off to a great start, only giving up nine points per game. And they're led up front by the big fella, Tommy Harris, only a sophomore, but an All-America candidate nonetheless. And Teddy Lehman, well, he's the emotional leader, their second leading tackler, and he provides a lot of big plays for a big play dig. Well, Charles, I'll tell you what, South Florida definitely has their hands full. They struggled versus Arkansas, but don't kid yourself, this no-huddle offense has a lot of talent and a potential to put a lot of points on the board, but if they do, it rests on their quarterback, Markwell Blackwell. And if you're going to run no-huddle and spread, you have to have a trigger man, and that USF has. Markwell Blackwell is a fifth-year senior, and he is the real deal. You may not have seen him before because this is his first national TV appearance, but enjoy him tonight. He can run over 1,000 yards in his career rushing, but throwing the balls where he's oh so dangerous. Gets the ball downfield to four or five receiver sets all the time, and USF counts on him in a big way. Ah, but South Florida is playing before the largest crowd in their very short history. It's a hostile environment. What type of mindset do they have to come in with tonight if they want to compete? The mindset that they took with them to Pittsburgh last year when they beat the Panthers, who later became a bowl team. That's what they have to remember. Memory muscles of good things, not of bad things such as the performance against Arkansas last week. They remember the Pittsburgh win last year, not the Arkansas win this, this year. Excuse me, the Arkansas loss this year. They'll have a mother load of remembrance to take back with them to USF. Well, well, if you're not a member of the Big 12 Conference, you've had your problems against Oklahoma because against non-conference foes, they are 12-1 in the Bob Stoops era. The last non-conference opponent to beat them during the regular season, Notre Dame. Back in 1999, that was in South Bend. We're going to step aside. The cheerleaders are ready. 72,000 are set. The Bulls and the Sooners next. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by Best Buy for the latest technology. Turn on the fun at Best Buy. By the United States Army, an army of one. By the new Fajita Trio, only at Chili's. Like no place else. And by NCAA Football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game. You think of Oklahoma, you think of the national champions, the All-Americans, and the Heisman Trophy winners. That's part of the Switzer Center. And this is Owen Field, where Oklahoma has lost only once under Bob Stoops. Great years for Bob Stoops, the third member of our broadcast team. He's going to tell us a little bit more about the starting quarterback for Oklahoma. Here's our Craig Sager. Craig? When Nate Hibble signed with Georgia in the spring of 98, it solidified one of the greatest recruiting classes in history. He graduated from high school early, won the starting job as an incoming freshman. But during fall practice, another highly recruited quarterback, Quincy Carter, now the Dallas Cowboys, walked off a minor league playing field and took his job. Hibble transferred, sat out, and basically didn't play for three years. Last year, he got a chance, but it was in bench. Instead of giving up, quarterback, former quarterback and offensive coordinator Chuck Long says he is the most improved player on the team. He got a chance this year midway through the opening part of fall camp and right now he has a terrific arm, a great touch and the confidence of his teammates. Over there. All right, Craig. Well, the distance and the rankings didn't scare off the USF fans right now. I'm standing with about 300 of them. They made the haul from Tampa, Florida to Norman, Oklahoma and in fact they're here to support their goal Just a couple blocks away from campus. And Ron, I tell you what, this is a 
beautiful atmosphere for these fans and this team. It's going to be exciting. Send it back to you. All right, just because their program's only been in existence for six years, that doesn't mean they don't have a lot of enthusiasm down in South Florida. As the Oklahoma Sooners take to the field, we are moments away from the opening kickoff. The number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners trying to keep their record intact here in Norman, taking on South Florida straight ahead. CBS Big Play Saturday is presented by Best Buy and Discover Card. It pays to discover, so use your Discover card to buy the latest stuff at Best Buy and turn on the fun. If you were to design a late September evening, it would be tonight. Game time temperature, just about 80 degrees. Expected to be down about 65 by the end of the game, but it is just glorious here. Geisler set to kick it away for South Florida. Antonio Perkins and Antoine Savage back for the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners last in the NCAA in kickoff returns. They would love to improve that. Not going to get a chance on this one. Perkins will down it in the end zone, and the Oklahoma Sooners will begin play first and 10 for their own 20. Now that Oklahoma offense, third in the country in points. They average just over 47 points a game. Quarterback Nate Hibble, the major difference, Charles, he's got confidence. And his team has confidence in him. You hear often that Oklahoma fans aren't confident in Nate Hibble's abilities, but the team believes in him, and he played awfully well his last time out against Utah. And here comes the Oklahoma Sooner offense. Very powerful. They want to actually just really solidify the run game tonight. They're in the nickel formation. The defense for South Florida. Oklahoma keeps it on the ground. Pitching back to Ronaldo Works. He crosses the 25 up to the 26-yard line. Now let's take a look at our Wranglers starting lineups. For the Oklahoma Sooners, keep an eye on Quentin Griffin in the back backfield. He may be 5'7", but he not only runs the ball well, he also catches extremely well. And on the line, Brad Davis, he is the hardest working guy on that line. We're going to call him this week's Big Nasty. He looked it in that picture, didn't he? Yes, he did. He looked like he had an attitude about playing tonight. Nibble's first pass of the evening. Throws it out of the flat, complete to Quentin Griffin. Dewan Brown on the coverage. Driven close to the first down. Let's take a look at that South Florida defense. It really starts up front for this South Florida defense to be successful. Tavares Journeyak, they call him T-Rex, leads the team in three sacks. Linebackers in the secondary, Kawika Mitchell. He's a Butkus Award candidate, very active in the middle, and he is the emotional leader of this team. Third down and short now for the Sooners. This is why Kevin Wilson, the offensive line coach, was hired third and short. They want to improve the run game. From the eye formation, first down and a couple to spare. Dewan Jones, the redshirt freshman out of Jenks, Oklahoma, who had the big touchdown in the game versus Alabama, gets the Sooners their first first down. One thing we're already seeing, we're seeing Oklahoma's offensive line exploding off the football. They wanted to go from a finesse game they played the last couple of years, more of a power game. And Bob Stoops, the head coach, was looking for that when Mark Mangino left to go become the head coach at Kansas, and he found it with Kevin Wilson, who brings that kind of hard-nosed attitude with him. Bob Stoops in only his fourth year. Three-step drop. They throw it out of the flat. Pass is complete to Will Peoples. Over the 40, up to the 42-yard line. J.R. Reed is there for the stop. And fans, just a reminder, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. The announcers, of course, are Jose Medellin and Marcello Godoy. Now pick up a five on the play, second down and five for this Sooner offense. Averaging just about 447 yards a game. They have big play potential. Dibble. As time throws, pass almost picked off, tipped right at the last second. Kevin Verbale looked like he was there on the coverage. Excellent job by Kevin Verpale, who's the starting strong safety and one of the leaders of USF's defense, falling back into the deep curl zone, reading the quarterback's eyes in their zone defense, breaking on the football only regret he didn't catch it that's a chance to have a turnover early in the game and set the tone for USF's defense third down and five Hibble from the shotgun pumps right throws left passes complete break and tackles its peoples again 
Up over the 35-yard line will be about three yards short. That'll set up a fourth down situation for the Sooners. And hey, Hibble's looking over the sideline. He wants to go for it. And there's hesitation on the sideline from Bob Stoops and his staff thinking hard about going for it, but I think they're going to run out the punt team now. Well, Bob Stoops in his fourth year has turned this program around completely. 34-7. and seven. Only seven losses in his career. How about that? Only two the last two years. And when you talk about Bob Stoops, it's attitude, attitude, and attitude. Andrew Rubin won't get a chance to return. This may have been touched, but it'll be down at the 32-yard line. Bad punt, bad coverage on that one. Oklahoma let it bounce back towards their territory, which gained which gained USF about five yards. Now the South Florida offense, only a field goal versus Arkansas. Markel Blackwell, very talented, but he's the kind of guy that looks to throw first before he runs. And you often hear about quarterbacks who are great athletes, but they want to use their legs more than their arm. Markwell Blackwell is a great athlete, but wants to use his arm more than his legs. 22 yards on that kick, and it gives something that South Florida didn't have versus Arkansas. Decent field position. Not necessarily good, but decent. No huddle offense. Blackwell from the shotgun. Three wide receivers, two at the bottom of your screen, one at the top. Bad snap. Blackwell will have to fall on it all the way back to the 12-yard line. Loss of 20 on the play. Oklahoma not taking any chances. They started with that nickelback already in there, and Jim Levitt doesn't want to start this way. And they play and they played zone coverage behind the blitz. Watch the middle. Right here, you're gonna see the linebacker, Teddy Lehman, coming into the picture now. He and Lance Mitchell both blitzing. The two inside linebackers, bad snap. Good play by Blackwell just getting on the ball. Here comes Oklahoma blitzing from the corner. Blackwell throws out on the flat. Pass is complete. Up to the 18-yard line. Hugh Smith with his 23rd reception of the year. Now let's take a look at where the Sooners in South Florida are. Third down, 23 to go. Ball on the 19. And Oklahoma let them have any pass they want underneath, such yeah. as the last play. You want to throw a short for two yards? Go right ahead. And Oklahoma's given up only five plays of better than 20 yards. Three came in the Tulsa game. They need 23. Blackwell. He's got some running room. Now he runs out of real estate as he closes in on the 30-yard line. They'll mark it out at the 28. Pick up a five on the play by Blackwell, and the punt team will come on. A very smart play by the senior quarterback. Nowhere to throw the football. No sense taking a chance or trying to make a bigger run than he could have gotten. Get out of bounds, turn it over to the punt team, and hopefully the defense can go out and hold again. Devin Sanderson averaging just over 41 yards a kick, standing back at his 15, and Antonio Perkins, a dangerous return man, number 15 in the NCAA, standing back at his 25. Perkins from the 27. Breaks one tackle, still on his feet. Crosses the 40 up to the 41-yard line. 44-yard kick, 12 on the return. Well, an exciting first four minutes of this ball game. 10:57 left to play in the first. The Sooners and the Bulls are scoreless. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Now the Oklahoma Sooners have crossed the Home Depot first and ten line once in this game. Bob Stoops wants to see a little bit more of that. Hesitated on fourth down before. Now Hibble comes back into the lineup. Great deal of confidence for this young man and had a chance to spend some time with him. He really is, is a changed person. He's grown up since last year. Nickel formation again for South Florida. OU keeps it on the ground. The Quinton Griffin, that little 5, 790 pound running back out of Humble, Texas. You know, here's a shy guy, Quinton Griffin. You know, here's a shy guy. You know, he's 5, 7, but the, the key to him, he stays low to the ground no matter what he does. He's one of those guys that with his stature can hide behind the, his offensive line. He takes the handoff on the inside. Excellent play by number 57, Daly. Chris Daly crashing from his defensive end position. Now four wide receivers for the Sooners. Hibble from the shotgun. Throws it into the flat right on the money to Curtis Fagan, the senior out of Houston, Texas. He crosses the 45 up to the 46-yard line. 
Charles, you know, when you look at this Oklahoma offense, it, it has a little bit of similarities to what Steve Spurrier has as far as his offensive philosophy. And South Florida challenged to get their alignment correct. And remember, Bob Stoops was the defensive coordinator for a number of years at Florida under Steve Spurrier. Don't think the defensive coordinators just learn about defense. They learn about offense, too, going against one of the best ever every day in practice. And he's adopted some of those same philosophies. And that's what South Florida has to adjust to. Third down and four. Hibble has the pass tip at the line of scrimmage. It looks like Maurice Jones from that strong side linebacker spot, the junior out of Bradenton, Florida, who is quite the physical specimen, I might add, had the uh, meat hook on the ball. Watch number six. He comes up with the pressure as he crashed in, coming up on the delayed rush towards Nate Hibble. He got both hands up, which is a well-taught linebacker. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up in the passing lane. Hopefully you'll knock the ball down or force an incompletion, and that he did. Well, Blake Ferguson, his brother Jeff Ferguson, was a great punter here at Oklahoma, putting to DeAndrew Rubin. Signals the fair catch, and he'll do it at the seven-yard line, and I got a feeling Jim Levitt probably wondering why he didn't let that go inside the 10. I would have taken my chances letting it hit and cartwheeling towards the end zone. Still scoreless here in the first quarter. South Florida, their first national TV appearance. Tuttle, Oklahoma, just outside of Norman. We're scoreless here as number two Oklahoma playing host to South Florida. 934 to play in the opening quarter. Fans, you can vote for tonight's U.S. Army Players of the Game, powered by America Online. So you can log on to TBSSuperstation.com or AOL keyword Big Play and cast your vote. Well, for South Florida, again from the shotgun, this time Crossley and Dewan Green in the backfield. Elgin Hicks and Hugh Smith, the wide receivers. Huey Whitaker also. Now, now they keep it on the ground, crossing the 10. It is... Clinton Crossley, the sophomore from Bushnell, Florida. Now let's take a look at the Wranglers starting lineups for South Florida on offense. Hugh Smith, one of 13 receivers to have a catch this year. He leads the team with now 23 receptions and on the line. Keep an eye on Shelly Houston because when the Bulls want to run, they'll run behind that big left guard. This time it is green, breaks a couple of tackles, crosses the 20, up to the 23-yard line. First down for South Florida. Dewan Green, transfer from Georgia, who actually played for the Bulldogs back in 99 and 2000. Notice how Oklahoma's defense is looking to their sideline to get their calls. See if South Florida wants to quick snap it later on to try and take advantage of them not paying attention. Keep, keeping it on the ground again and again they break through with Green. Matt McCoy finally shoving him out of bounds. And what we're seeing right now is this young upstart team who came in with no expectations into this game getting a little confidence. And what you're getting, you notice see how Oklahoma had trouble getting lined up? Remember, they looked to the sidelines as a unit to get their calls. South Florida caught them before they could get set up. Now, one of the problems that Oklahoma has had has been lining up. They've got a lot of young players on defense, and Brent Venables and co-defensive coordinator Mike Stoops has been concerned about that. And they'll have to work harder on getting their calls in quicker for their defense so they can get lined up. First and 10 from the 41-yard line. A little counter play. This time, not much going on. Oklahoma closing quickly on Clinton Crossley. Lance Mitchell coming up to make the stop as we take a look at the Oklahoma Sooner defense, number two in the NCAA in points given up. Jimmy Wilkerson has just one sack. The coaches would love to see him have a breakout game tonight. And in the secondary, Derek Strait leads a very solid group. About six interceptions for Strait in his career. Look at this formation, double stack with the wide receivers right behind each other, often sets up a screen pass. And that's what it is. Blackwell throws it out into the right flat to Ryan Hearn. He's upended as he crosses the 45 up to the 46-yard line. And Derek Strait, the junior out of Austin, Texas, comes up to make the stop. A lot of signaling for both teams. Markwell Blackwell picks up the signals from the sidelines from Rod Smith, their pass game coordinator. They are called down from the, from the booth by the offensive coordinator, Mike Hobby, who also calls their audibles from the booth, and they're also signaled in. We'll see how that goes tonight. Well, you can see what South Florida has done on third down conversions. OU opponents only 25% of the time they've been successful. Third and five, Blackwell. Into the flat, complete to Brian Fisher. Oh, and as he 
may take a hit. Maybe good enough for a first down, but Lance Mitchell gave him a denture check. When you think about defenses that like to come after the quarterback as Oklahoma does in the, with their blitzes, you often think that they play, they often think they play man to man in the secondary. What a shot by Lance oh Mitchell. My. That hit. That hurt. <laughs> you need a little All-State after that hit, don't you? Lance Mitchell with a big-time shot, but Oklahoma likes to play zone behind their blitzes, and this is why. They're an excellent tackling team. They don't mind you catching it. You're going to pay for it each and every time, though. And we'd like to thank All-State for providing tonight's goalpost cam. All-State, you're in good hands. And just about a good hand and a half is what South Florida is short of the first down. I think Jim Lovett, what do you do? I mean, you might as well go with it. I yeah. think you go for it here because you have everything to gain, nothing to lose. It's the old adage, right? Yep. Why play conservative here? This is a ball game that's going to shape the future of your program. Let's have some fun. You're getting national visibility. Show the recruits you like to have a good time and go after it. Fourth down and one, South Florida 0 for 1 on fourth down attempts this year. And I don't think that this is a rundown for South Florida. I put it in the yeah. hands of Blackwell with a run pass option. Blackwell has to go up and yell at everybody, and everybody's jumping off. And I think South Florida's Derek Sorosi from that left side may have jumped. And here's part of the problem. South Florida's normally in the shotgun. And it's a direct snap from the center to the quarterback as we get the call here. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, good that. John Robeson, our referee tonight. And when South Florida, when Mark Lowell Blackwell walks up to the line of scrimmage, now he goes from a silent count to a cadence where he has to bark signals. And sometimes that throws off your offensive line, and he had two guys jump, both tackles. Because guess what? They're really not used to hearing his voice that much calling signals. It's a big change up for an offense. Great point. You see Antonio Perkins in our super shot. Evan Sanderson, the kicker. Out of New Jersey. Well, it was a pretty impressive drive for South Florida. Good spiraling kick. Perkins lets it hit. Smart choice. 54 yards on the punt by Sanderson. He did his job. We've got a timeout. South Florida holding tough with the number two team in the country. Seven oh seven left in the first quarter. The Oklahoma Sooners and the Bulls of South Florida are scoreless. Now the EA Sports pre-play last week predicted Oklahoma would win big today. And in our fan poll from EASports.com, 62% predicted that Oklahoma would win big as well. So far this year, EA Sports and the fans, not real good. You're 0 1, so stay tuned to the game to see who is correct this week. As we take a look at Jim Levitt, actually played here at Oklahoma or played in Missouri, played Oklahoma four times, was 0 4 as a defensive back for the Missouri Tigers. Been with the program seven years, only been playing football six there. Hibble throwing this one up for grabs and to no one in particular. Intended for Brandon Jones. Let's go back to Ernie Johnson. Thank you, Ron Thulin. Showdown today in Ames, Iowa. Nebraska and Iowa State. Seneca Wallace runs for a couple of touchdowns, throws for one. Iowa State has beaten a ranked team for the first time since 93. That's why a lot of folks are winning on the field. 36 to 14. Let's run it up the middle. Come on, let's run it down the field. And you know, Ernie, they're the only school in the Big 12 that you can't tear the goalpost down. Hibble pitches it back to Ronaldo Works. He crosses the 25 up to the 27. Hey, props to Dan McCarney. I mean, yes. here's a guy, not only is a good friend of all of ours, here's a guy that took over a program that was lower than low. This is this is huge for this team. And props also to the Iowa State administration. Gene for Smith. Hang, for Gene yeah. Smith first and now Bruce Vandeville for hanging in there with Dan McCarney during the lean early years. Everyone wants, you know, instant, instant success. You can't always get yeah. it at a school like that. Good job hanging with a good man. Dan did it the right way. Hibble has Griffin trailing, going to keep it, crosses the 30 up to the 33-yard line. First and 10, Oklahoma. That brings up a great point. Everybody talked about Jason White. He is a better runner. But in this offense, doesn't the quarterback have to be a viable runner? He's not Eric Crouch, but then again, he's not Vinny Testaverde either. Exactly. And they told us yesterday in our meetings with Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, and Kevin Wilson, the run coordinator, run game coordinator, that they haven't changed a single play in the playbook for Nate Hibble. He's going to do all the same things as Jason White. 
This time, Quentin Griffin trying to get behind the big guys. Maybe picked up about two or three on the play. Quentin Griffin out of Humble, Texas, down around the Houston area. They had a great picture in one of the Oklahoma papers about a week or so ago. They had him right behind big Jamal Brown, the right tackle, who's 6'6". Couldn't even see Griffin. <laughs> but you know, as big as guys are nowadays for Quentin Griffin in warm-ups, he needs to go and run with the offensive lineman and feel the ground shake so he doesn't, so he doesn't lose his balance when running during a game. He's got to get used to it. On second and seven, penalty flag is thrown. Kiwan Jones crosses the 45 up to the 47-yard line. Kevin Verpale finally upends him, but not before the first down, but we do have a penalty. Oh, let's see who it's going to be on. Oklahoma doesn't get penalized much, only about six a game. Take a look at John Robinson. Looks like it may be against South Florida. Offside. Defense. Penalty is applied. First down. See Jim Levitt in our super shot talking with the officials. Felt that his team was victimized a little bit last week at Arkansas. Said it didn't cost him the game, but put his team in some tough spots early. Looking to yeah. avoid that tonight. Jim Levitt, I tell you, he's got the perfect expectation for this game. He told us last night, he said, you know, if we win or lose, doesn't matter. Especially if we lose. It's not going to be the end of South Florida football. This is all part of the building process. Great attitude by the head coach. It is. They're just looking for an excellent performance, something they can build on. Play action, Hibble rush, lug out. Has to throw it away. Excellent pressure by that South Florida front four. Kalika Mitchell coming from that linebacker spot. Courtney Davenport also coming in. But we have seen already Mitchell's ability and his versatility. On, watch, the, watch the middle after the play fake. You see Davenport, number 31, flushes Hibble. Kawika Mitchell tries to put the finishing touches on it. Nice job by Nate Hibble in the pocket, able to get rid of the football and not take the sack. And Jim Levitt's talking about intentional grounding. You know, you can get rid of it anytime you want if you're outside the tackle to tackle box. He's saying he was in the pocket. Oklahoma straight ahead running on second down and 10 from the 48 yard line. They'll try Quinton Griffin again. Had that 237 yards rushing versus Tulsa. Here's Craig Seger. Well, at defensive front four, you're talking about from South Florida doing a great job already forcing two punts. The big story there is one of the players by the name of Greg Walls, the defensive tackle. He's the most highly recruited player in South Florida history. Actually had a scholarship offer for Oklahoma, but turned it down to play for South Florida. Huh? That's right, Craig. And this is a kid they call Baby Sap. I think every team's got a Baby Sap we've had this year. But as a football player, Warren Sap's a great guy to emulate. Hibble sees pressure again, dumps it off, maybe picking up two yards on a play as Will Peoples. Peoples came in with only four receptions on the year, and already he's got three. Pressure was put on by Sidney Simpson, bringing him in from that cornerback spot. And Oklahoma's going to be forced to kick it away. Throwing underneath because they feel like the, the guy, they have guys who can stretch the field, so they think they can get yardage underneath. What a great job by Kawika Mitchell, the linebacker, seeing the seeing the, the pass route, not being fooled by any fakes, coming up and making the tackle and forcing a punt. The third one of the game by Oklahoma. Fourth and three. Ferguson saw a little bit of pressure. No fair catch. Well, they are going to say it's a penalty. Two-yard halo rule. DeAndre Rubin, and there's that rule that nobody likes. You know, when you don't signal a fair catch, though, why not be fair game? And Only 28 yards on the kick. The onus is on the coverage team to make sure they keep the two-yard rule. The interference against Oklahoma this year, that's a 10-yard penalty. Remember, in the past, yeah. it's been a five-yard penalty. They beefed it up because they want to make sure the punt returners are protected after some of the hits they absorbed last year. He catches there on the kicking team. 10 yards, first down. Now watch, the onus is on the coverage team. You have to run down there full throttle, then gear yourself down and keep the two-yard halo. No doubt about it on the call. Will Peoples definitely inside the two yards. Not a big hit, but he's inside the two-yard zone. Penalty has to be called. Once again, decent field position for South Florida. 343 left in the first. Nobody's been able to sustain anything thus far. Oklahoma still in their nickel look. Markwell Blackwell trying to check off now. The audible coming down from offense coordinator Mike Hobby. The crowd now involved. Seven to snap it, plenty of time. 
They keep it on the ground to DeWan Green. Nothing doing. May have even lost the yard on the play. And what a great point about he had plenty of time. That's what the no huddle offense gives you. You line up at the line of scrimmage. He gives you the full effects of the, of the play clock. Yeah. They don't have to break the huddle, hustle up to the line of scrimmage. He has a lot of time to get the audibles and get the play on. This is an offense that had the ball only 18 minutes versus Arkansas. Much better already tonight. Still a lot to play there. Loss of two, second and 12. Oklahoma showing blitz. And they're coming from the corners in the middle. Blackwell dumps it off. Pass complete up to the 37-yard line to Hugh Smith. Smith is second reception of the evening, and he's pumped up. And already we're seeing a difference from South Florida from last week against Arkansas. The wide receivers are catching the football. Had nine drops last week. Here they're yeah. making plays now that help their offense and help their quarterback. Hey, if you're Oklahoma, you're allowing South Florida to get a little bit of confidence, albeit a little bit. Pick up of 11. Third down and a yard to go. Here comes Oklahoma with the pressure. Blackwell sneaks right around Lance Mitchell. Dives for the first down. Teddy Lehman is there for the stop. And that's good enough for a first and ten for the Bulls of South Florida. He had to duck under the tackle of Lance Mitchell, who looked like he had a beat on him. And what happened was Lance Mitchell, number ten, the linebacker, actually overran the play a little bit, allowing Blackwell to duck inside and get the first down. Which is what South Florida coaches wanted. They wanted to use that Oklahoma speed to South Florida's advantage. Let's again in the middle, Mitchell number 10. Nothing doing. This time it was Teddy Lehman coming up to make the stop. Lance Mitchell with the initial force, both inside linebackers, factor, factors on this play. Watch the middle. Lance Mitchell just flushes free and runs him down with his great speed. Teddy Lehman, number 11, applying the finishing touches. Loss of five on the play. Minute and 40 to play in the first quarter. Now, if you're Oklahoma, you think about turning your guys loose, playing some zone behind, and making tackles if Blackwell's able to get the ball downfield. Again, Oklahoma dancing around on defense. They bring five. Blackwell sees the pressure. Penalty flag. Blackwell is just going to throw this into the cheap seats. Well, you have to think that's going to be a hold. Yes, and USF was trying to set up a screen to one of their running backs. Officials caught the hold early. Here's Aaron Andrews. All right, Ron, well, we told you earlier that about 300 fans from USF traveled to Norman, Oklahoma to support these Bulls. I'm here right now with Mike Griffin, the president of the student body. A big test today for the Bulls, but the fans, they showed up. I tell you, the Bulls fans here at South Florida, there's no matter where we are, we're going to come out and support the team. OU's got seven national championships. We've been around for six years. We're running toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's great. What do you think of the atmosphere here at Memorial yeah, Stadium? The atmosphere is great. The fans have been great. But I tell you what, this is something that we're going to become. we got a young program, and we're building it up. Quickly, a prediction. USF 33, Oklahoma 28. Ron, they're confident here. <laughs> That's right. You can see what they've done. Only one losing season. Jim Levitt in his first year, he had 18 freshmen that played in that first season. Second down and 25, Crossley and Green now joining Blackwell in the backfield. It is loud. Blackwell, plenty of time, throws it over the middle, almost intercepted. Eric Bassey, the Richard freshman out of Garland, Texas, looking for his first career interception, had it, lost it. And that's is why Mike Stoops and Brent Venables, the co-defensive coordinators, like to play zone even if they blitz. Eric Bassey is the strong safety. He just started from an inside position, ran underneath the route that Hugh Smith, the wide receiver, ran, was with it all the way, almost came down with the interception. I want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goal post game. Allstate, you're in good hands. Here's Mike Stoops, brother of Bob Stoops, and Brent Venables, the co-defensive coordinators. Third down and 25. Brett Venables on your left. Here comes the pressure. Blackwell, a little looking screen. Not much running room. For the Andrew Rubin does get up to the 30-yard line. Picked up about four on the play. Well short of the first down. 
South Florida has to cut down on the penalties because a penalty took them out of good field position. Even if they had to turn the ball over before without the penalty, they put Oklahoma back on their end of the field. Now they need a good point and excellent coverage in order to not have field position move in the favor of Oklahoma. Well, Sanderson's last kick was 55 yards. Perkins now standing on his 26. Good snap, a little bit of pressure. Sanderson again, a nice kick. Perkins at the 25. Dances around up to the 35. 55-yard kick again, 10 yards on the return. Just a reminder, our next telecast will be coming your way next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern time on TBS as 18th-ranked USC travels to Poland to take on the 16th-ranked Washington State Cougars. By the way, it'll be homecoming in Pullman. Of course, USC at home today against Oregon State. Oregon State 4-0 on the year. And Dennis Erickson's got himself a good ball club. Today's his big test. Going on the road to L.A. to take on the Trojans, who were upset after their loss last week at Kansas State. Well, see if the Sooners can get anything going offensively. Not on that play. Quentin Griffin, nothing doing. Lance Mitchell from that middle linebacker spot to make the stop. Or I should say, uh, Kawika Mitchell. What a great story for Kawika Mitchell. Born in Hawaii, his dad Charles lives there, his brother Coogan. And they're watching Kawika Mitchell play football for the first time. Great story. Great Charles, story. have a Mai Tai for us, my man. 15 minutes are in the books, and it's early, but it's a shocker. Oklahoma and South Florida scoreless at the end of one. Welcome back to Big Play Saturday. Defense has been the key for South Florida thus far. Almost had a pick there. Then you see Hibble handing off to Griffin. Nothing doing from the big front four of the Bulls of South Florida. That's some pretty good pass defense on the other side. And Hibble even saw a little pressure. But I think if you're Oklahoma, the word now is something Kevin Wilson likes to talk about, patience. Being able to run the football, only getting about 2.4 yards on first down thus far tonight. But just have patience in the run game. Continue to pound away at it and hope that some cracks will occur later for the backs to get through. Now, Will Peoples with his fourth reception of the night. He had four total coming into this game, three against UTEP a couple of weeks ago. This is a young man. They said, we need him to break out. We need him to come to the forefront. And that's what he's done so far tonight. Uh, he's making his case for a little bit more playing time. Continues to catch the football and run Chris Browns. Three wide receivers set for the Sooners. Hibble keeps it straight ahead running. Elon Jones. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Now let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first 15 minutes of play. And how about total yards? 68 to 50. Who would have thought that? But I think the key if you were South Florida, time of possession. Yes, because they're almost equal with Oklahoma. And the biggest key is the turnover stat. Zero. No. South Florida gave up a number of turnovers early against Arkansas. Hurt them in field position and, of course, hurt their defense in trying to play. And then the snowball effect occurred, and Arkansas overran them in that game. Ferguson has not been consistent kicking the ball tonight for Oklahoma. And again, not a good kick. That is a poor kick. I watched him in warm-ups and he was not hitting the ball well then. You were hoping he'd break out during the game, but thus far, his, most of his kicks have not been good tonight. Well, his brother set the uh, Oklahoma record kicking as he walks over to talk to Jonathan Hayes after the 19-yard kick. Well, just a reminder, if you have a question you want to send us, all you have to do is just email us. We'll select one question to answer later in the game. Send your question to TBS Big Play at AOL.com. And by the way, please include your name and where you are from. Good field position for South Florida here on their own 38. Don't be surprised if they try and open up things a little bit more now. They've had to be conservative on their own end of the field. And maybe they take a shot downfield to try and loosen up Oklahoma. Well, after the 20-second drive, 20 seconds of drive for Oklahoma. South Florida takes over as Clinton Crossley showing that South Florida is, is does have a little bit of balance. They're going a little passing. They're going a little running. Yeah, all zone blocking. What that means is everyone just kind of takes a step to their right or their left, blocks the man in front of them. The back looks for a crease. Oklahoma can't buy into the fact that South Florida throws all the time. And there's a great graphic. You can see exactly what the South Florida coaches want offensively. 
Second down and four. Blackwell to look in a big hit, incomplete pass. Pass was intended to Elgin Hicks, the junior out of Fort Charlotte, Florida. He bobbled it, but he had the boom lowered on him. And this is why I'm talking about South Florida taking some shots downfield. Everything's been off a three-step drop. Quick slant there, and then wham. That's one of those, if it's a completion, it's still a headache. Excellent job out on the corner. Third down and four for the Bulls. They're one of four tonight. Oklahoma putting on some pressure. Blackwell with time. First down, South Florida to hit. Hicks crosses the 50 down to the 44-yard line. Lance Mitchell finally came up with the uh, tackle. Hicks was a high school All-American, was one of those guys that Mike Stoops was concerned about because here is a guy that was recruited by Florida, was really a prize recruit by the Gators, and ends up now in South Florida. Penalty flag is thrown as DeWan Green maybe picks up two on the play. Yeah, we told you that South Florida had the potential. And this is where they have to stop doing this. They have to quit shooting themselves in the foot if this penalty goes against them. I believe it might be holding in the interior. They're getting good field position and moving the ball, but they're stalling their own drives with penalties. And you saw Alex Heron, number 71, trying to see who was at fault. Holding. Offense. 10-yard foul. Repeat first down. That's the third penalty against South Florida tonight. And we saw Jim Levitt in the super shot, exactly what's going through his head. We've got things going our way. Yeah. We've got to make sure that we take care of business now. Right here, there's the offensive coordinator, Mike Hobby, for USF. He makes all the calls from the booth, including the audibles. Different way of doing things, but very successful for South Florida. And you think it would be difficult with this atmosphere to try to audible from a booth in front of 76,000. Second down and 19. Blackwell has a man complete inside the 40, and it is Huey Whitaker. Whitaker also took a big shot. Whitaker, the junior out of Spring Hill, Florida. Again, the receivers are catching everything, but look at the protection up front for USF. As a sprint, a sprint out pass for Blackwell, no one comes near him. The young offensive line for USF is holding up quite well to, thus far tonight. Five different receivers have caught balls for South Florida so far. We got a little trick play wide open. Dewan Green, touchdown, South Florida. Penalty flag is thrown. Hang on. He may have thrown it forward. I'm thinking double pass here instead of lateral. I'm yeah. not sure they got the lateral. Brian Fisher caught it and threw it. But I think they were, uh, wasn't quite what they wanted to do. And this, this will drive Jim Levin crazy if it comes back because he really won't have an argument with the officials. He'll have to talk to his own team about execution because they just used their Phantom Raider early. You know how they talk about using trick plays first? USF out of the gate with the first one, fired it and was successful. But I'm quite sure it's coming back because I don't think it was a, a lateral to the wide receiver yeah. first before he threw it. It's a forward pass. Well, Brian Fisher can't throw the football. He was an All-State quarterback. Let's a listen in. Pine Forest. Yeah. Now they're moving it back. Here they go. Come on, Jim, tell us. We had an illegal forward pass, second forward pass. That results in a loss of down. Then we had a dead ball, personal foul against the offense. We'll go five yards for the illegal pass, 15 for the dead ball foul. The mistake on this play, the onus is on Brian Fisher, number 16, the wide receiver. He has to know that he has to go backwards, not forwards. And he got too excited on the play, did not run the route correctly. Watch, watch where he is. See, he only takes one step back. Yeah. He needs to be back here to be safe. Instead, he gets overly excited, beautifully executed play by USF, but an easy call for the officials. And then the compound the problem, you had the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Probably came as a result of being distraught that they didn't get the play completed successfully. 
That penalty was worth 30, another 15 yards. They lost 37. Double stack again at the top and bottom of the screen. Oklahoma jumping all over the place, but South Florida also jumping. Yeah, I think South Florida's offensive line. Yeah. Looked like back. that right side. Carruthers yeah. and Newton, everybody was picking up. Everyone trying to pull back as they got they held in there for a long time in their stance. Remember, everything's silent, you know, for, for USF. There's not there are not very many audible snap counts. So after a while, you get nervous if the ball hasn't been snapped if you've sat in your stance for a long time. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense. Oh. Five yard foul, repeat third down. I think Bob Stoops told what he, <laughs> what he thought about it. Yeah, no more, no, nothing else needs to be said with that reaction, no. right? Now both teams coming off bye weeks. Bob Stoops says he gave his team last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Got back to hitting and drilling, and, and these guys have hard practices. In fact, if you've been to an Oklahoma practice, a lot of them are harder than the games. <laughs> you go to an Oklahoma practice, and you come out tired just That's for right. watching them. And before he gave them the three days off, they went hard before that. Yeah. Those are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, it's still third down in a bundle, 22 for South Florida on their own 44-yard line. Oklahoma brings a bunch again. Blackwell throws it over the middle. It's going to be overthrown, incomplete down the sideline. Intended to Huey Whitaker. Derek straight on the coverage. And again, here we see South Florida. They make some headway. They look like they're moving the football. Then they have penalties. And the unfortunate side of it is they're doing so many good things. And Markwell Blackwell managing the game a lot better than he did at Arkansas. Yeah. The whole team was a little bit intimidated by the environment there. And when things started to go south on them, they went south in a hurry. He said that he was a lot more focused this week mm -hmm. and wanted to lead his team. And thus far, he's doing that. From the 44, they'll try to kick it away again. It's a return ball. Perfect. From the 18, straight up the middle. Penalty flag is thrown. He's going to go to the house. Antonio Perkins with his second return of a punt for a touchdown this year, but we do have a penalty flag. Oklahoma thinks it's against South Florida. They think the play is going to count. They're already sending out their extra point team. 81 yards on the return. He already had one for 91. Let's listen. Holding on the kicking team. That's the two. Touchdown. Well, Jim Levin is yelling at his punter, Sanderson, as the fireworks overhead of Owen Field. And he's telling him he has to get the ball up in the air. This is an easy return ball. Look in the middle, number 99, Tim Jones. There's the hold right there. Excellent shot of it by our crew. Great job, guys. He got the hold initially. And the reason the ball was a return ball, I said it right at the top, low spiraling kick made it easy for the return guy to run up on the ball before South Florida could get downfield and cover it. Trey DiCarlo with the extra point. We want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goal post cam. Allstate, you're in good hands. So Antonio Perkins, the sophomore out of Lawton, Oklahoma, finally puts Oklahoma on the board. TBS Big Play Saturday is presented in part by T-Mobile. With T-Mobile, you get more from life. Get more minutes, more features, and more service. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Zager, Aaron Andrews, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you back to Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma Sooners have finally taken the lead. 7-0 with 11-18 to play in quarter number two. After a scoreless first quarter, DiCarlo, line drive kick. Five yards deep in the end zone. Yeah, that's a good move. DeAndre Rubin had to sit down. Now, if you're South Florida right now, one of the problems you had against Arkansas is you lost your composure when you got down. Those problems just started the snowball. Blackwell cannot be impatient here. No, and when we talked with Jim Levin, the head coach, and Mike Hobby, the offensive coordinator, they both said the same thing to us in separate meetings. We must have poise under pressure, and we must trust our system. Mm -hmm. Last week, they got away from that. They lost their poise early. Everything snowballed. Instead of seven points down, they were down 28 before they could blink. Trust the system. It's been working. They just have to get away yeah. from the penalties. A well, lap two weeks ago against Arkansas was drop passes. Tonight it's penalties. Crossley. 
Oklahoma stringing it out, and you can just feel it. And I've seen enough games here at Oklahoma, Charles, that when they come up with a big play, all of a sudden the crowd gets into it, the momentum starts to build up, and players seem to puff their chests out a little bit more. And the team feeds off of big plays by other parts of the team. The special team set up the defense now. They want to show that they're a big play defense. Here they come after South Florida. Nice second and nine, Oklahoma pressure and Blackwell, he takes a hit, but not before he gets the pass off. Up to the 26-yard line, and again, it is Elgin Hicks. You know, Hicks is this kind of receiver. We were watching him on tape and watching him tonight. He doesn't look like he's running fast, but he is. He's very smooth in his gait, very smooth out of his cuts. A lot of people are surprised at the lack of success he's had at the Division 1A level. He's hoping to find that in Tampa. Big third down here for the Oklahoma defense. Third down and four. Oklahoma bringing six. Penalty flag, hold everything. Blackwell takes his seat, but do over. Yeah, I don't think they, they don't think South Florida got set on the forward line. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five-yard foul. Repeat third down. Well, that's the seventh penalty for Jim Levitt's squad. But this is the game that they hung their hat on last year against the University of Pittsburgh. Markel Blackwell to DeAndre Rubin gave USF a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Went up to 28-7. Then in the fourth after Pitt kept the lead. Rubin again from 53 yards out. Blackwell would score on a quarterback sneak. But the problem with that, they won, but they couldn't hang their hat on it because the following Tuesday, September 11th. Yeah, the momentum they built up from the win, they couldn't sustain because the whole nation had to struggle with what happened. They couldn't go out and celebrate as you normally would. On third down and nine, Blackwell's pass is complete up to the 30-yard line, and it is Hugh Smith. Now the Oklahoma players are saying no, they trapped it, but the officials said that's a good catch. And he had two officials off the play, two sets of eyes from opposite angles. And a good job of route running by Hugh Smith. Why? He knew where the first down marker was. And he saw where we had a case for Oklahoma as the ball came out in the bottom part of Hugh Smith. They're wondering, you know, did, did he catch it and then the ground caused yeah. it? The officials say that's what happened first down USF. Big third down conversion for the Bulls. Keep it on the ground. Green running room up to the 40-yard line, close to another first down. Brandon Everidge coming up from that free safety spot, the junior out of Granger, Texas. Here's Craig Seger. One of the big matchups here is the freshman tackle for South Florida, Chris Carruthers, matched up against the All-American Tommy Harris. The coaching staff for South Florida, very impressed. They keep telling him, keep your hands up quick, keep your feet moving, don't let Harris turn your shoulders. Huh? That's a good point, Craig, and Tommy Harris, the sophomore from Colleen, coming off a groin injury, hasn't played that much this year. They keep it on the ground. Again, they have Dewan Green and Eric Bassey coming up from that strong safety spot. Once again, Andre Wolfolk not playing tonight for the Oklahoma Sooners in that defense. Quarterback. Well, here's uh, what we were talking about. Chris Carruthers on Tommy Harris, gets his hands out. Tommy Harris is going to say, hold it a second, that's a hold. That's a, that's a takedown, baby. <laughs> that's a hold right there, but yeah. Chris Carruthers got away with one. That'll just give him more confidence against the All-America, Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris, 6'3", 280, and he likes to sing. May sing the national anthem at one of the games this year. Not if Bob Stoops has anything to say about yeah, it. that's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And the crowd's back into it. On the ground. Crossley, nothing doing. Tough fumble. Ball is loose. Oklahoma's got it. That Crossley had a couple of big-time hits with helmets right on the football. Matt McCoy coming in, came up with a recovery, but, boy, I'll tell you, he took some shots. Mike Stoops, the co-defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, told us yesterday, as you see the ball come free because of three guys on the tackle for Oklahoma. You see Mitchell, Everidge, number seven, they knocked the ball free. But Mike Stoops said, don't give up big plays because our defense will take over. If we hit you enough times, we can cause turnovers. Let's see if Oklahoma goes for Pater. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Hibble's looking deep. Has a man complete down to the 24-yard line. It's their All-American tight end, Trent Smith. The senior out of Clinton, Oklahoma. He will 
probably be the front runner for the Matthew Award this year. This is Trent Smith, number 88. How many tight ends can flex out and run routes as a wide receiver would? A slot receiver? Not many. Great job by Trent Smith getting open. Timeout by USF as Oklahoma has the momentum going their way. Well, he had 61 receptions last year as a tight end. After three games, he already has more than last year. We're going to take a break. Oklahoma leads by a touchdown. Over 72,000 on hand in Oklahoma leading 7 0. The Sooner fans have something to crow about. We brought our soapbox with us to Norman. Let's see who jumped on the soapbox this week. I'm a Sooner born, I'm Sooner bred. When I die, be Sooner dead. Grow, 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 Oklahoma! Okay, I ain't showing that Oklahoma! We have the best campus, we have the best school, we have the best everything, baby. Number one stadium, getting redone. Now, Matthew Beatty is tonight's winner of the RAN. He receives an EA Sports package and is eligible to join Ernie live at the Big Game House on November the 23rd. Boy, I'd circle that. You get to be with Ernie? Wow. That's a, that's a big day. <laughs> that's huge. But, it, but to do it at the Big Game House, yeah. that's big time pleasure. You get to slide down the fire pole and that's play right. the games. And you and I have to slide by there at some point. You know, Ernie knows Charles Barkley? I heard that. Yeah, he's, he, he, and, he and Charles are tight, I hear. That's what I heard. Second down and six after the pickup of four on the play. Oklahoma spreads him out again for a wide receiver set. Whitten Griffin with Hibble. Hibble sees pressure, and he is going to be dropped back at the 29-yard line. Kawika Mitchell with the first sack of the football game for South Florida, his second of the year. And, you know, when you talk to Kawika Mitchell, what a great young man, the senior out of Winter Springs, Florida, originally out of Hawaii. He says, listen, I'm pretty good, but listen, i got to give props to uh, Journeyak and also to Walls. Yeah, the big guys up the middle forced their pressure, and that helped Kawika Mitchell, but what really helped him was the secondary. Number 21, Maurice Tucker, locked up on Trent Smith, number 88 from Oklahoma. Yeah. Took away the pass from where, where Hibble wanted to go with the football. He had to eat it. Third down and about 13. Oklahoma better hurry up and snap it, and they do. Hibble. Into the flat, down to the 20-yard line, to the 15-yard line is Trent Smith. They'll mark it at the 14. That should be good enough for a first down. Here you have a tight end and a wide receiver's body with Trent Smith. Exactly. Great call. Shallow cross. And he wears number 88. You know who also wears that number? Tony Gonzalez with the Kansas City Chiefs, formerly of the University of California, out of the Pac-10, one of our conferences. Trent Smith runs just like Tony Gonzalez. Great hands, great athlete. That's a tough cover for Maurice Jones. Straight ahead. Nothing doing, but South Florida may have had 12 men on the field. They were trying to get a player off. Now, Trent Smith is a uh, major in aviation, so here you're going to put a 6'5", 230-pound tight end into an airplane. Not and too bad, huh, Charles? Not too bad, and I heard the ride is always good with him. Comes from a family of aviators. He's one of those guys that, that wanted to fly before he could walk. You know, you always hear about the guys coming out of the womb wanting to play different sports. Yeah. And they got legal substitution here, as you mentioned it, yeah. trying to get the guy off the field. And Jim Levitt right now, he knows all about Big 12 country. Former co-defensive coordinator with Bob Stoops at Kansas State before he took over the job at USF, a building project. But for him, it was going home. You know, I think what he's saying is the guy that ran off the field only left him with 10 on the field. I think that's what he's, what he's complaining about. Hey, we didn't have 12. We didn't have 12. We had 10. So, so if you're going to count, make sure you get the count right. We yeah. have enough problems that you penalize us for something we really didn't do. There's the red zone for Oklahoma. 10 touchdowns and 16 possessions. Works and Griffin now in the backfield with Hibble from the shotgun. Big hit inside the 10, down to the 8. Hibble quickly pops up as we send it down to Craig Sager. Well, Jim Lovett obviously is being very discouraged by all the penalties going against his team, but he's trying to keep the team encouraged. He was very adamant about that last call because, yes, Simpson did not get off the field in time, but that left the team with just 10. He told the officials, you're making a penalty without even counting how many men are in the field. Huh? Oh, yeah, Craig, you know, because I think the officials only saw everybody running off the field. And they just naturally assume you yeah. know how many you have out there. They get confused, too. Good point by Jim Levitt. They'll have to count a little bit closer. High formation on second and four. Second man through. 
Down to the three-yard line, and it's Kiwan Jones. This is a good-looking redshirt freshman. He could turn out to be a big home run hitter on this Oklahoma offense. And this is what Oklahoma wants. Look at the guys, hat on hat, right there. Bang! Big block up front. And what you're getting now is a guy who can move the pile in Kiwan Jones, number 20. Beautiful trap block coming around, number 75, Mike Skinner. And you notice when Jones delivered the punch at the end, he went forward. First and goal, straight ahead, and Jones this time is detonated by Mitchell. Oh, my. Check the helmet, make sure the strap is still on. That's why he's on the Butkus Award list. Kiwan Jones, let me introduce myself to you. I'm Kawika Mitchell, and I'm pretty darn good. <laughs> and on the last number 20 that I remember wearing number 20, Billy Sims, he probably would have went down on that hit, too. Anyone would have gone down. Kawika Mitchell had all the momentum coming forward, knifing through a gap, big time play. Loss of two, second and goal from the three. Hibble looked to put it up into the flat. Touchdown, Oklahoma! the touchdown reception for the Sooners. I think that Kevin Wilson, the run game coordinator, would really have liked to have run the football in using the power game and let his offensive lineman feel good about things. But Oklahoma is smart. Why butt your head up against a brick wall when you can fake it inside and throw it out for a touchdown? extra point and it is good. Oklahoma getting the punt return for a touchdown. Seemed to loosen things up. And then Hibble to Runnels. And the Sooners lead 14 up. T-Mobile, you get more from life. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by Home Depot, driving down the cost of home improvements. Uh, beautiful campus here in Norman, Oklahoma, just about 100 yards from where we are right now. Along with Charles Davis, Aaron Andrews, and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. It's the Oklahoma Sooners, number two in the country. have opened up a 14-0 lead. Picked up at the eight-yard line by Rubin. Trying to find some running room. Hits the corner. Look out! Up to the 35 to the 40-yard line. Will Peoples finally shoving him out of bounds. Excellent return by the Andrew Rubin. And it looked like it was going to be disaster for him to begin. Because it looked like the ball's going out of bounds. But this is what the Andrew Rubin can give you. Big playability as a wide receiver and a kick returner. There's one touchdown earlier in the season. And here's the second one. Bringing it all the way back against Northern Illinois. This is a guy who puts up big numbers every year and then he seems to get dinged up with a little nagging injury that limits his effectiveness as the season goes on. If they can have him for all 12 games this year, they feel like he can put up big time numbers. That was a 41 yard return for DeAndre Rubin. First and 10 for South Florida. They're going to talk about it from the 40 yard line. This was a very important series, I would think, for South Florida. You still have four and a half to play. To play. You can see the return once again. This, did it hit the line? Let's see where the ball. The ball hits, nope. and what a kickback. Right at Ruben, oh, right yeah. there. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds, and he should be down right there at the eight-yard line. A big break for USF. Good job by the guys in the truck. Excellent job. And watch the block that he's going to get coming up right over here. Here it comes. Nice block. That helps. By Davenport. And what a good block because he didn't clip him in the back. He waited till his front side showed to him and then blocked him. Let's go to the big game house with Ernie. Yeah, thank you, Ron, because the uh, Chili's halftime report will be coming up in, uh, in just a little while. And at that time, we're going to show you why the fans were streaming onto the field in Ames, Iowa, because Iowa State had a big day. We'll show you why Joe Paterno was sprinting after the officials at Penn State. And a wild game between Kentucky and Florida. The Gators trying to make it 16 straight wins over the Cats. But this one was uh, a little bit out of control. Let's go back to Norman, Ron, and Charles. All right, EJ, Iowa State will be here in Norman on October the 19th. You don't think that's going to be a biggie? 
That's a huge ball game when you think about it. Well, Oklahoma coming off the Texas game on October 12th. What a stretch Oklahoma has. They oh, yeah. Missouri next, right? Then they get Texas. Then they get Iowa State. <laughs> Colorado, you. Texas A&M. The Big 12 is tough. And they wonder why some of the coaches don't like to schedule all these real difficult non-conference foes. Oh, it's easy to see when you look at the, their conference schedule. USF only 1.7 yards per first down, Ron, tonight. Oklahoma on the blitz again. Blackwell is going to have to just throw it out. Nothing doing. Good quarterback pressure put on by Tommy Harris. We talked about Harris going on against Carruthers, the Richard freshman. Got a personal foul because they hit Blackwell out of bounds. Saw the pursuit of Blackwell. And he was hit over the sideline. Personal foul. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike Stoops and Brent Venables are not going to like that. They want their guys to be aggressive, but not this aggressive. They want them to be smart. It's like number 80, Dan Cody giving chase. See that shove? Yeah. Unnecessary at the end of the play. Ball's already gone. Officials will protect the quarterbacks. And now, as we said, still with 424 to play. Important series for South Florida. The Oklahoma defense up to the challenge. Lance Mitchell coming up to put the brakes on DeWan Green. Well, you have to get some props right now, I think, for this very young offensive line by South Florida. You look at these guys, three sophomores, two freshmen, and so far tonight, I think you'd have to give a tip of the cap to them. Excellent point. They have not been overrun on the evening. But right now, I'm seeing Oklahoma starting to draw a bead yeah. on USF's play caller. Now, well, South Florida has shown them an awful lot. Three down linemen for the Sooners. They bring five. Pass incomplete up to the 35-yard line. Pass was intended for Whitaker. Was there. Didn't get the hands on it. Huey Whitaker led this team in receptions last year. I believe he had 52. This ball was a little bit behind him because Blackwell was rushed. Well, our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Third down and 14, ball on the 49-yard line. 3.47 to play in the first half. Bob Stoops' his team outside of the Alabama game. It hasn't, his defense hasn't been pushed. It's been pushed a little bit tonight. Let's see if they come after him here, try to put a little pressure on him. Once again, everything is done when the center gets ready to snap the ball, when Alex... Heron gets over the football. Then he just snaps it. A lot of guys get antsy. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, five-yard foul. Repeat third down. Eight penalties, 65 yards against South Florida. That's a South Florida offensive line. See, see him start to jump there. They even had jump right here by the other guard. You made a good point. They get a little antsy. They always talk about holding their water while they're up in the line of scrimmage. Yeah. After a long time, the state sitting under center. It takes a while. They want to jump. And look at how young this team is. You made the point earlier. Freshmen and sophomores playing. Well, so far tonight, the average to go on third down for South Florida was 13 and a half. This one, it's 19. That doesn't help you win games. No, it doesn't. Oklahoma brings five pressure on. Blackwell, time, looking, throwing. Is it a catch? Yes. Elgin Hicks, a marvelous catch, and we have a penalty fly back at the 40-yard line. What a job, though, by Markwell Blackwell. And I'm thinking that Blackwell also took an extra hit after he released the ball, which could tack on another penalty for U in USF's favor. What a great job by the receiver staying with the play. You'll see Hicks right there. He's going to go back out because he sees his quarterback in trouble. Push the foul. Defense. Welcome to passer. First down. Well, that's two personal fouls against Oklahoma on this drive. And now Jim Levitt, maybe the politicking and campaigning in that first quarter is paying off a little bit. And Oklahoma is over anxious now because yeah. they've had to chase Markwell Blackwell so much that when you finally get to him, even if the ball's gone, you want to give him a little shot. And they have to have a little more discipline than that. Wow, Lance Mitchell almost got that one. Excellent yeah. diving catch by Hicks. 22 yards on the pickup. First and 10 from the 16-yard line. Green. They string it out. Fumble, and Oklahoma will have it. Now the 
Sooners did exactly what they do so well defensively. They strung it out. Ball was on the ground, and Jonathan Jackson came up with his first fumble recovery of the year. The speed of Oklahoma so evident. Eric Bassey, number 13, and then the big hit over the top by number 28. That would be that would be Antonio Perkins. Bam! Right there. Ball is out. Excellent call by the officials. The Oklahoma defense swarming. Jonathan Jackson getting the recovery. Well, their speed is just incredible yeah. on defense. And you can see the turnover story. How many of these forced and how many points they've gotten off it. Now Oklahoma wants to add to it. They throw the screen out to Antoine Savage. Savage, the senior out of Albany, Georgia. He is their deep threat. The big play receiver. Looks like we have a penalty flag thrown. You know, if you're Jim Levitt, you look at the opportunities you've had so far. Yes, you've had penalties, but Jim also had the bad uh, double pass, which cost him a touchdown. It was a 14-point turnaround because Oklahoma ran the punt back. Then you're driving here and you fumble the football. You've had the opportunity to do something. Second fumble of the night. Quentin, Quentin uh, excuse me, Clinton Crossley had the first one. DeJuan Green gets the second one. I got to keep this in perspective. This is the sixth year when Jim Levitt actually started this program. Paul Griffin, the AD, hired him. Dead ball. Delay a game. Defense. That penalty was only in the first down. You know, but he, he takes over this program. They didn't have showers. They didn't have lockers. They didn't have a <laughs> practice field with goalposts on. They had absolutely nothing. And to think what this man has done in such a short period of time, I think it's just sort of remarkable. And remember this, their first game they played in their existence, they put 80 points on the board against yep. Kentucky Wesleyan and had a full house, 50,000 people at the ball game. Hibble throws it out into the flat to Fagan. Fagan's still on his feet. Gets up to about the 40-yard line. Pickup of nine on the play. J.R. Reed coming up from that free safety spot. The junior out of Tampa, Florida. Now, fans, check out our instant poll results. The question was, do you think Oklahoma will win the Big 12 South? 63% say yes. 37% say no. Hibble, swing pass right side. First down, Oklahoma, as we head towards two minutes left in the first half. One thing, when you look at Nate Hibble, Charles, you know, we've looked at enough tape. But one thing I see, there is so much confidence in this young man. He is an exceptional person. Spent some time with him yesterday, and you and I walked away very impressed with his poise. And what I liked most about him is that he admitted that last year he did lose his confidence, yeah. and he had to regain it. And it was a blow not to be named the starting quarterback at the start of the season. But he stayed the course, and is paying off for Oklahoma now. Good numbers. Hibble going for the home run ball and is going to overthrow his intended receiver, and they want to hold. Not going to get it. It was intended for Will Peoples, and Ron Hemingway was with him step for step. And good coverage by Hemingway. People are protesting because they get used to the pro rule about the five-yard bump rule. Yeah. As long as the ball's not in the air, you can be physical with the receiver. And Hemingway, Hemingway was down in the secondary, but he was off of the receiver before the ball was thrown. You know, I look at the, uh, the plays between the two teams. Oklahoma's run 32 plays, South Florida 31. The difference in yards, four. But that doesn't mean anything. It's 14 that means the big difference Difference right in now. the game, two turnovers by right. South Florida and their penalties. Hibble, the shovel pass. Up to the 50, down to the 48-yard line. Quentin Griffin, who's done that so well for Oklahoma. That was our discussion. That was our discussion in the car coming in, right? Shovel pass, shovel, shovel pass. pass. You know, my, my coaches at Tennessee called it the whoopee pass. But a lot of people give credit and call it what? The Utah pass. Go mm -hmm. back to Cactus Jack Curtis, the head coach, and Lee Gross Cup, the right. cover, cover, running that play. That's where, the, that's where gave rise to this play. So, however you want to call it, but I like Shovel. I'm with you. Props to James Lofton for coming <laughs> up with Shovel. Hibble throws it out of the flat. Pass is complete to Smith. Running room. Down to the 22-yard line. What a great route by Trent Smith, and Jim Levitt was telling his defensive corner, use the sideline as your friend. What he did was he came inside. See, if he attacked from the outside, he takes him right there. He's got it. But he comes inside, lets Smith get to the outside. He gains extra yardage on the play. How about three catches for Smith? 2015, that one went for 25 yard line, 25 yards, and we've got a timeout. Still available for the Sooner trip to Waco versus Baylor. 
Now tonight's pre-play is created with NCAA football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game. Here are the highlights from the USC Washington State game. We'll be broadcasting next Saturday night. The Cougars, Jason Gesser gets warmed up in WSU on the board with a TD strike to Mike Bush. The state with the early lead. The Southern California looks to get back into the end zone. Some quickness out of the backfield. But in the end, it's too much Gesser. Here he shows off his versatility. That's it. These guys look just absolutely real. Goes the distance, and Washington State hols off the Trojans. Log on to EASports.com and cast your vote on the outcome of next week's game. Be sure to join us at 7 o'clock Eastern to find out the real outcome. How do they get these guys looking so I real? don't know, but it's pretty impressive. And that last play we saw at Gesser, yeah. you know, with the lateral downfield, yeah. that's like old-time football there, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it gets downfield, laterals to a teammate. Everyone had to be able to catch the ball and run it in the old days. That sure looked like yep. one of those plays. <laughs> now, South Florida was knocking on the door with four minutes. Now it's the Sooners returning the favor. Hibble, double clutches, has a man in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma Will Peoples. Reception. Look at the poise in the pocket by Hibble. Defender in his face and still delivers a strike. And Will Peoples laying out with a big catch. Something there was something mentioned about him having to step up tonight. Yeah. I think that question has been answered. The challenge has been met by Will Peoples. The extra point is good. So Nate Hibble showing a great deal of poise tonight. He's had great numbers. Very efficient on offense. Look at it again. Watch people starts to the inside and works to the outside. Hemingway bites on the inside fake and really has good coverage. Just a perfectly thrown pass. Remember I talked about his poise in the pocket. Gave a little pump. Kawika Mitchell, number five, is in the face of Ryan Hibble. The ball could not be thrown any better than that one was. You know, you get Nate Hibble the rhythm, and that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to get into a rhythm tonight, and I think he's done that. By the way, we want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's Gold Coast goal, 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 Camp. Allstate, you're in good hands. But Hibble has got that rhythm right now. And Oklahoma's offensive unit and football team, by extension, is in good hands right now with Ryan Hibble. That's right. All the people who have been the naysayers and the doubters, excuse me, Nate Hibble, I called him Ryan because his, his brother, brother love it. is a great <laughs> golfer at the University of Georgia, and I knew him from a past life. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's call him let's, let's say Nate Hibble. He had a great throw, but this team believes in Nate Hibble. We heard that from Tommy Harris, and we talked with him yesterday. Well, South Florida has 66 seconds to try to get in this. Callum drops it at the five. Oklahoma converges down at the 15 to the 16-yard line. I'll stick around for our Chili's halftime. Ernie will be at the big game house catching you up on all of today's action, including Nebraska losing at Iowa State today. Ooh, and how about that thriller at Penn State, huh? Iowa, Kirk Ferentz doing a great job at Iowa. Yes, yes, he is, and a huge one. They let a big lead get away, but they won it again in overtime. And Will Peoples, who caught the last touchdown pass, he actually has two two tackles tonight on kickoff coverage. Touchdown pass juiced him up to yep. run downfield. Now South Florida, not enough players on the field. They're going to bring another one in. That's where we talk about poise and making sure everyone knows who's supposed to be in the game at the right time. One second to snap it. They get it off. They throw it into the flat. Blackwell is complete up to the 22-yard line to Hicks. It was a 14-0 game. Things were looking good for South Florida, and then they fumbled. Oklahoma taking advantage of it. And you notice they are not going to sit on the ball here, even deep in their territory. They want to try and get something going again. The idea of having nothing to lose paramount in their minds. South Florida only a 1.4 yards on first down. On second, the pass in and out of the hands, incomplete intended for Ryan Hurd, the senior out of Ocala, Florida. He's a former walk-on who's really made himself into quite a player for South Florida. We talked with Markwell Blackwell yesterday. He said he's one of the guys been chirping in his ear, so he's not getting the ball enough. 
And if you look at only two catches on the season coming into the game, there was an opportunity for him. He's got to take advantage of it. And he had a drop at the, in the Arkansas game also. Yes. 25 seconds left. Now Jim Levitt's got to be careful. Third down and four. He'll be kicking into the wind on the punt. Oklahoma blitz it. Here they come. Pass. Tip. Intercepted at the 37-yard line. No, they're going to say it hit the ground. Brandon Everidge looked like he had it. Bassey tipped it at the line coming up on that safety blitz. Now if you're Oklahoma on special teams, this might be a chance for you to work on your pump block because there are only 18 seconds left in the half. You might want to rush after uh, the punter for, you, for South Florida to see if something that you've been working on will work in a ball game. If you end up with a penalty, you're not as worried about it. Now well, at halftime, South Florida's got to open up a can of poise. Sanderson's last punt returned for a touchdown. This is not a good kick. Line drive, but at least he angled it. Good coverage by South Florida. Perkins not much doing at the 38-yard line. Stay tuned to TBS Superstation after the game for even more fun. Matt and Cherie will take you through the best post-game party on the planet. Hi, Eddie Murphy. A hilarious journey and coming to America after the game on the Movie Bowl only on TBS Superstation. And you will see Dr. Peter Benton from ER with the worst <laughs> Jerry Curl in the entire world. And my grandfather owned a barber shop in Elizabeth in Tennessee. So the barber shop scenes for me they're are priceless. funny. They're absolutely priceless because they are real. I've seen it as yeah. a kid. <laughs> That's right. And Eddie Murphy played everybody. Hibble looking for more. Throwing this one up for grabs. A bunch of jerseys, and it's going to be incomplete. No penalty flag thrown intended for Peoples. And that'll do it. So Mike Stoops, Oklahoma Sooner team, scoreless at the end of one, but they hang 21 on South Florida in the third quarter. A couple of touchdown passes, a punt return, and the Sooners head to the locker room. Up 21 0 at halftime. Now, here's Craig Sager with Mike Stoops. I thought you have a 21 point lead, but what has impressed you about South Florida? Well, they're they're a good football team. They're coached well. They're very sound at what they do. Uh, we we've made a few plays, not enough, but uh, they're you know they're uh, they're executing well as well. What's your assessment of Nate Hibble so far? I like it. Nate, Nate has really been comfortable. He's throwing the ball uh, wonderfully. We got to keep going after more you know more deeper routes and and uh, try and stretch the field a little more. There's no huddle the way they're spreading out. Do you think the crowd's getting to him? Well, I don't know. Uh, not, not doesn't seem to be bothering them a whole lot, but they're no huddle. They stand there and wait a long time. It gives you plenty of time to line up, so I don't, I don't think it's big bit, been a big issue. Uh, thanks a lot. After a scoreless first quarter, Oklahoma goes to the locker room up 21 to nothing. We'll be back with the second half, but now let's go to EJ. All right, big play Saturday. What do you see? We hear from the pride of Oklahoma marching band. show like no other. Scoreless after the first 15 minutes, but Oklahoma hangs 21 on South Florida in the second quarter. They lead at halftime 21 nothing. Part of the halftime fest festivities just a couple of minutes ago, they honored one of the greatest, if not the greatest, linemen in the history of college football. Oklahoma's Leroy Selman, joined by Joe Castiglione, the AD here in Oklahoma, brother Dewey Selman, and Barry Switzer. Ladies and gentlemen, as they say here in Oklahoma country, thank God for Mrs. Selman. That's exactly right. Of course, Leroy Selman, now the athletic director at South Florida. He was probably the greatest lineman ever. This is a guy that never, ever had a bad down. He played 100% every down and he got a standing ovation from 72,000 Oklahoma fans and the 350 South Florida fans just a few moments ago. 21 nothing is our halftime score. We will have second half kickoff coming up straight ahead from Norman right after this.
Welcome back to Big Play Saturday presented by T-Mobile and Discover Card as we get ready to start the third quarter. 21-0 is our score. The Oklahoma Sooners leading the Bulls of South Florida in their first nationally televised game along with Charles Davis, Tom Ronthula. Now at the top of the show, we talked about Markel Blackwell. He needed to play well for South Florida. The Oklahoma defense, they were ready to tee it up. Blackwell really has done his part, I would have to think. He has. The problem with the team has been penalties, which is set back drives, and also a couple of fumbles when they've moved deep into Oklahoma territory and the Sooners have capitalized on both of them. But well, one of the things I think South Florida has to do is they need to get that poise back that they had in the first quarter. They seem to waver a little bit in quarter number two. Good point, because when they had their poise, it was 0-0. They were playing their game. They had a few drives, a couple of setbacks, but they never lost sight of what they were getting done out on the field. They lost that a little bit in the second quarter. We'll see if Jim Levitt can rally his team here in the second half. I believe that he will. Now let's take a look at the Wrangler halftime statistics. And you look at the numbers. Remember, it was 132 to 136 on yards. Well, Oklahoma dominated after that point. Yeah, the biggest one I see is average gain on first down. At one point, Oklahoma was only averaging a little more than two yards. Now they've moved it up to five. That's a healthy gain on first down. For South Florida, only 2.3. That has to change for them to have any opportunity in the second half. Now let's go down to Craig Seger. Well, Jim Levitt told his team at halftime, we had two costly fumbles. You can't turn the ball over against Oklahoma. They thrive on it. Also, we made a big mistake on that punt. You have to punt the ball to the sidelines. We're not here to play this game close. He told his team, I don't believe in moral victories. We are here to win this game. I don't know if they can, but he certainly is trying to rally them. Right? I'll tell you what, Craig, you got you to tip your hat, though, to uh, Jim Levitt for saying that. I mean, he could just say, hey, guys, great first half. We did the job. But he's saying, no, that's not good enough. Don't give me this stuff. This program's only been around six years. Let's get out there and play some football. He's the same guy who told us yesterday that when, we, when they started recruiting, it was with an eye towards joining Conference USA. If he couldn't play in Conference USA and win us a championship, let's not recruit him. In other words, as he said, no moral victories. Right. We go out and win each and every time. Now, of course, they start Conference USA playing next year. They will play four Conference USA opponents this year. And Markwell Blackwell, he did what he was supposed to do. Markwell's on the Davey O'Brien watch list. And, and I think what he has to keep in the back of his mind, he has to just take what Oklahoma gives him here in the third quarter. And that's what he tried to do in the first half. The only downside to that is they have to run a lot of extra plays in order to move downfield. And the more plays you run against the Oklahoma defense, the better your chances of turning the ball over or committing penalties. They need some big plays, too. They go with four wide receivers, three to the left, one to the right. And they keep it on the ground. It was successful for parts of the first half. DeWan Green makes his way all the way up to the 30-yard line. And I think if you're Oklahoma, you've got the depth. Your program's been around a while. But if you're Jim Levitt, your first team, they're very good football players. But then things might start getting a little testy out there. That's why your first team has to be in great shape and you have to avoid injuries. Blackwell swings it out of the flat. They're coming out smoking right off the bat. Two plays, two first downs. Hugh Smith on the reception. Well, doesn't that go back to what Jim Levitt said about no moral victories? We go to play. We, yeah. come, we come out and try and win. The team is, adopts the persona of their head coach. Yeah. Jim Levitt is never going to be one of those guys that's going to settle. And he has his team motivated to play well in the second half. We're seeing that already. Four receptions now for Hugh Smith. And first and ten again. They'll keep it on the ground. And again, a little bit of running room. Penalty flag is thrown as Green gets up to the 50-yard line. He was tackled by Brandon Everidge. Everidge on the stop. Could be a hold against South Florida. Well, they've already been penalized nine times for 70 yards in that opening 30 minutes. Or in the tackle, perhaps Oklahoma got a hold of the face mask. A lot of discussions tonight. Oh, yeah. Guys definitely trying to get the call right. You have to give the officials credit for that. They don't want to get the calls wrong. So if it takes a little extra time, so be it. Block in the back. Offense. Five-yard face mask foul. Defense. Those penalties offset. The we'll replay first down. <laughs> Great reaction. Here's the face mask. Nice move. Yep. Oh, yeah. And almost knocked the ball free, too. Excellent cut against Teddy Lehman. Left right corner. There. there it is. DeAndrew Rubin trying to block. It's Derek Strait. And Blackwell swings it out to Ryan Hurd. He crosses the 50 down to the 48-yard line. 
You know, when you look at Jim Levitt, here's a man that was very successful coach at Kansas State. Why did South Florida hire him? Well, you look, he was at the Dubuque Spartans, no winning seasons, 40 years. Morningside College, hadn't won in 28 years. Went to Bill Snyder, they were rebuilding. He knows what he's doing. Green is upended by Lance Mitchell, the middle linebacker. Lost about a half a yard on the play. But that's why they hired, I would have to think, Jim Levin. He knows what it's like to rebuild. He knows what it's like to rebuild, and there's a payoff in the rebuilding. All those programs you mentioned had very successful seasons before he departed and moved on to another one. Third down and five. Oklahoma showing blitz. Here they come with six. Blackwell throwing the prayer up. Intercepted by Antonio Perkins. Still on his feet to the 45-yard line. Second interception for Perkins. Jim Levitt frustrated Blackwell. Asking him, what did you do? Take a look at this one. Markwell Blackwell trying to find an open receiver. I wonder if the receiver ran the wrong route. But Oklahoma firmly in control in the third quarter. Twenty-one to nothing as Markwell Blackwell throws the interception. Only his second of the year. But did Hicks give up on it? Let's take a look at it. See as Hicks comes downfield, the ball is gone. You've got to make a real strong effort to try and get to the football and suddenly become a defensive back and try and knock it down. Now Oklahoma back on the offensive attack. Fagan gets up over the 45-yard line down to about the 44. Pickup of about one on the play. Nice play by Chris Daly from the left defensive end spot. The senior out of Brooksville, Florida. Also a Lombardi watch list candidate. Yeah, had enough like nine sacks last year, eight and a half, nine and a half sacks yep. last season. It's a good rush defensive end. Well, they say he picked up one on the play. Second down and nine. Hibble. Plenty of time. Dumps it off to his big tight end again, Trent Smith. Fans for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams. Log on now to rivals.com. Trent Smith with his fourth catch, 70 yards in the ball games on reception. His, this, he's going to be an outstanding player on Sunday. He really is. And, and what I like about Oklahoma is they've kind of picked up the rhythm starting about midway through the second quarter. Chuck Long's established an excellent rhythm in calling the ball game as the offensive coordinator, mixing the run and the pass very successfully. Here comes the reverse. South Florida all over it. Kawhi, Kawika Mitchell right there. He didn't bite into any of it. That's a heady play by the senior out of Winter Springs, Florida. Yeah, he got some help from Terrence Royal, number 56. One of their best deep, one of their strong defensive ends. They run a three-man rotation. Watch here. As, as he comes around, both guys are already there because they had a blitz on. The worst possible call versus blitz. Here's Mitchell, number five. He's ready to make the play. Sees the pitch. Makes the initial contact with some help from Royal. Loss of 10, second down and 20 now for the Sooners. South Florida's showing blitz. They bring five. Hibble steps up, rifles the pass into the flat, complete down to the 32-yard line to Curtis Fagan, the senior out of Houston, Texas. His third reception, Maurice Tucker on the coverage. I know Quentin Griffin is only 5'7", and we talk about him in terms of running the football. But something else he did very well in that play was pass block. He gave Nate Hibble an opportunity. Watch Griffin number 22 right there. And watch as the rusher comes. Excellent job. Moves his feet. Working against Kevin Verpale, the strong safety. Opened up the lane for Hibble to step up and fire the strike. The coaches talked about that, how impressed they are with his Brock blocking ability. Third down and eight. Hibble stepping up. Look out. He's got some running room. Dives forward, and he'll be close to the first down. Maurice Tucker closing in from that quarterback spot to make the stop. Looks like that's enough. You should have it. That's what we talked about. It is a first down. That don't worry about Nate Hibble. Everybody talked about Jason White running the football. And this young man has to. He can't. 
And he, you know, he's not going to ever impress you with his ability to break out of the pocket and do the boogaloo. All right? That's right. He's going to impress you with his ability to break out of the pocket and keep his vision downfield to find open receivers. And then if they're not there, he goes north and south. He gets upfield and gets positive yardage. A good, heady leader. Yeah, he's a coach's kid. Well, <laughs> that helps. That does not hurt one bit. It's like osmosis. They're going to keep it on the ground with Griffin. There's some of that power from the 5'7", 195 senior. Maurice Jones coming up, and a penalty flag is thrown. Should be a late hit piling on. What did we talk about, poise? Boy, South Florida just, they don't have any toes left. They shot themselves in the foot so many times. Tenth penalty. And they're bringing Chris Daly, number 57, out of the ball game. And he's met by his head coach, Jim Levitt, oh for, a few, boy. for a few words. <laughs> and it's a very, very one-sided conversation. Oh, yeah. Defense. First down. <laughs> See, yeah. what you do is you compound a nice, a nice effort, but then you give them, you know, down to the nine-yard line. And, and the other thing is, Chris Daly, is there a lawyer in the house? Because I'm making no headway with my head coach. And I got to tell you, the lawyer has no chance either. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chris is going to sit and think about it a little bit. <laughs> Kiwan Jones now in the backfield. Hibble throws it up into the end zone. Incomplete. Penalty flag is thrown. Intended for Fagan. Tuck around the coverage. He may have got a little piece of his backside. And if it is interference against Maurice Tucker, he bailed Nate Hibble out because that wasn't one of the better balls thrown by Hibble yeah. tonight. On the fade route, the ball has to be more towards the sideline. He throws more towards the, inner, in the middle of the field. Watch Fagan trying to get out for the fade route. Ball's there. See the hand as he worked the inside hand on the shoulder pad. Watch the inside hand. There it is right there on the shoulder pad. Excellent call by the officials because it was not one of those uncatchable passes ball that he could have made a play on the ball yeah. but Nate Hibble still needed to throw the ball more to the wide side of the field and rather than back towards the goalpost area then it's an easier play for Curtis Fagan now the Sooners first and goal for the two they try it on the ground and South Florida nothing doing coming up is Kawika Mitchell stopping Kiwan Jones on the play but he does get down about the one yard line now, I know the Oklahoma coaches are not going to butt their heads against the wall if they don't think that they can run it in. But believe me, nice play by Kawika Mitchell, the middle linebacker. But believe me here, they want to run this football inside and score a touchdown so the linemen feel good about themselves in run blocking. Second man through, touchdown Jones. freshman out of one of the powerhouse high schools here in Oklahoma, Jenks, Oklahoma, outside of Tulsa. First three games, he had five touchdowns. Only Charles Thompson surpassed that in 87 with six as a youngster. And he adds another one here. DiCarlo with the extra point, and it is perfect. Now the big offensive line of Oklahoma has their way with South Florida and the Sooners have up the lead at 28. Welcome back to Mormon, Oklahoma. The Sooners leading the USF Bulls 28 to nothing. Well, within OU's rich tradition is their famous mascot, the Sooner Schooner. The wagon makes its appearance at every home game and it's powered by two matching white ponies, Sooner and Boomer. They race across the field at about 15 miles per hour. And Ron and Charles, let me tell you, I got to ride the Sooner Schooner during pregame. I was trying to smile, but I was holding on for dear life. That was a wild ride. <laughs> to say you were holding on for dear life is a classic understatement. I haven't white seen white knuckles like that since you've seen me on an airplane. That was incredible. Hugh Smith, the penalty flies all over the place. Oklahoma coming down with some serious intensity. <laughs> Dennison with a big hit. We've got a bunch of hankies all over the place. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. You know, she, she we got to get her on Ralphie the Bison and then Bevo. <laughs> and, and it's a complete, you know? 
Aaron, I, you know, I'm jealous because I'd love to ride the Sooner Schooner. That looks like a great ride, but I don't blame her for holding up. Holding on the return team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. I mean, when you ride, when you ride these guys right here, all right, you talk yeah. about the greatest lead blockers in the history of sports. <laughs> well, they all told, of course, Ralphie and Bebo will argue that. Oh, yeah. Part, but at the same time, tell me that is not the seat of honor right there. It is. And our Aaron Andrews has been in the seat of honor. Well deserved, too. Nice job, Aaron. Roughnecks, a great tradition here in Oklahoma. 9.34 to go after the penalty. South Florida backed up to their 10, and now they've got to think about being careful again. Oklahoma smelling a little blood right about now. Blackwell has five to snap it. It is loud. Here they come. Into the flat. Pass is complete up to Huey Whitaker, and he is gang tackled. These guys tackle so well. When as soon as the ball is caught, the receiver is put down almost in the spot that he catches the football. When you talk about gang tackling, there's great one-on-one -on -one no. tackling going on in the secondary by OU. A pick up a five out of place, sets up a second down and five for the Bulls. Blackwell throws it out in the flat, passes complete to Hugh Smith. Well, as you mentioned at halftime, one of the greatest linemen in the history of college football, certainly the greatest lineman in the history of Oklahoma football, was honored. Leroy Selman, now the athletic director at South Florida, and he is our guest up in the booth. Leroy, good to see you again, my friend. Well, great. It's good to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Well, you know, now the, the story goes is that Larry Lacewell came to recruit Lucius, but he was already be re being recruited by Eddie Crowder of Colorado. Well, was he lucky to get Lucius because he ended up getting you and Dewey, too? Well, absolutely so. He, Lucius, our older brother, was heavily being recruited. and uh, and uh, But Larry really did a wonderful job. He really came down and... Uh, he sold he Mama Silver, Jerry, right? Jerry, he sold the right person. <laughs> and we just followed suit, so... <laughs> What's it feel like to be honored here? I mean, you looked almost embarrassed with Coach Switzer down there and your brother Dewey. Well, I tell you, just great people and uh, just had an opportunity to play with a, uh, a lot of great players on great teams as coached mm -hmm. by great coaches. So uh, so uh, I was very humbled to tell you the truth about it all. Now we'll pick it up here with your South Florida Bulls, first and 10 on the Sooner 21-yard line. Blackwell will keep it on the ground. Green is hit hard. Coming up is Brandon Everidge from that free safety spot. Anyway, how big of a task is it to try to build a football team from scratch? Well, I tell you, it's a very large undertaking that which requires a lot of work from a lot of people and a dedicated team. And that's what we have at the University of South Florida is uh, lots of folks that's really working hard. Uh, Coach Levitt is uh, just doing an outstanding job you know, of assembling his staff, his players, putting in systems. And I think for the first six years, they've done an outstanding job so far. Well, they've got second down and 10 now. Oklahoma blitzing again. Blackwell, nice job stepping up in the pocket. Run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Leroy, coming back to Oklahoma and, and, and of course, being honored and, and all those great things. You're watching the athletes of today play. You guys were one of the most dominating defenses college football's ever seen. What do you think about now by what you're seeing? Well, I'll tell you, this is a very uh, outstanding defensive unit. And as I kind of recall all through the years, Oklahoma has always kind of done strong defenses. And uh, I see that out here today and the speed and the size of the guys is just unbelievable. Third down and six now. That Speedy Oklahoma defense brings six. Blackwell throwing it deep. Could be intercepted. No. Almost picked off by Derek Strait. Is this a game, though, you're down 28-0? Is this a game that your players just need to learn from? This this doesn't mean the season's over or anything, does it? No, not at all. I mean, this is an experience not just for the players, but for our coaches and for our, our fans that, that joined us down here as well, because we get a chance to see what big-time college football is all about. And if we aspire to get there, we need to see it, feel it, and go back home and just work that much harder. Well, they, they had a good first half, just had a couple of mistakes. They caught him. Running at the 11-yard line. Perkins being backed up. They're putting it to the sidelines, just what Jim Levitt wanted. And it'll be marked at about the 30-yard line. Leroy, congratulations. You gave a lot of us some great memories. And you gave me, when I lived here, great barbecue sauce. Well, great. Uh, well, we, barbecue we, sauce you had the best. Well, we try to do our best, and no matter what we do. So, <laughs> right. anyway. Best, best luck to you and your yes, program. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks for having me. Leroy Sullivan, the Sooners, his former team, leads his current team. 28-0, we'll be back. 
Our first and ten lot is brought to you by Home Depot. Oklahoma's had a couple of first and tens. They've had 13. USF has had 12 in this ball game. What a, what a thrill to sit here and talk oh. with Leroy Selman. Good example. He made a great point during the commercial. Why the Pro Bowl in the NFL shouldn't be played. Leroy Selman hurt his back in a Pro Bowl game, playing, playing a meaningless football game, and that ended a Hall of Fame career. He could have played a few years longer. Why play that game makes no sense. Hibble wants to stretch the field. He does. Incomplete. Well, the players on Oklahoma's team, they remember Leroy Selman, especially Tommy Harris, who's been compared to the All-American. I wasn't nervous. I was just walking. I just met him like 20 minutes ago, and I was astonished. You know what I mean? Like, his whole aura is so, like, calm. You think what you hear is like, you think he's like a beast or like, but he has a, ple a pleasant aura about himself. And it was just an honor to uh, be able to uh, sit and uh, shake his hand. And he told me some great things about myself, and I'm like, no, all, it's all on you. It's all about you, the legend. He, he was embarrassed, I think, when he met Lee. He was scared when he met Leroy. Listen, all these guys, you would think that they'd be blasé. There's Tommy Harris, number 97. See him wearing number 97. You think he'd be blasé as great a player as he is, but there they are. There's Leroy, number 93. Lucius in the middle, number 98. And Dewey on the right, number 91. And I mentioned before, thank God for Mrs. Selman, that used to be the number one bumper oh, yeah. sticker in, in the Sooner Nation. That's right. Because of her putting out those three great young men. The pride of Ufala, Oklahoma. Third down and 10 for Hibble and the Sooners. He's putting it up as a man. Incomplete. Now Bob Stoops, I think, Kevin Wilson, and also offensive uh, coordinator Chuck Long, not pleased with that series. Not pleased, but at the same time, Bob Stoops told us at halftime they wanted to take more shots downfield, so they're taking them. Yeah. You know, so so while they didn't gain yardage, at least they're trying to get some things done. And being up 28 to nothing, and the defense playing as well as it has all game, you can afford to try and work on some things in the course of this ball game. Andrew Rubin standing on his own 23-yard line. Ferguson has struggled tonight cutting the football. This one not a good kick again. Now we know what he's going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by Best Buy for the latest technology. Turn on the fun at Best Buy. And by Wrangler at Wrangler's new five-star premium denim jeans. Real comfortable jeans. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Sager, Aaron Andrews, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you back to the absolutely glorious night here in Oklahoma. Temperature probably in the high 60s, low 70s about now. 28 nothing is our score. 713 to play in the third. Oklahoma, the number two team in the country, taking on South Florida. First and ten for the Bulls, and the Sooners blitz again. Pump fake. Blackwell has a man downfield. Complete down at the 40 yard line intended for Elgin Hicks. Nice recovery by Michael Hawkins, that true freshman out of Carrollton, Texas. And that play was what they call a counter because all game long they've shown the swing pass out wide to the back. And now the defensive back settled down on what he saw was a swing pass. Elgin Hicks ran downfield. The ball was just thrown a little bit short. Otherwise, the Bulls had a big game. Nice call by the offensive staff of USF. They've been setting it up the whole game. Second down and 10 from the 31. Four wide receivers set. Blackwell again looks over the middle. Has a man complete up to the 47-yard line. And again, it is Hugh Smith, his sixth reception of the evening. Well, America, you're getting to see Markwell Blackwell, and I hope you're as impressed with him as I am because I've been impressed with his poise. He threw the interception, but I think that was caused by his receiver, and what a strike he just threw on the crossing route to Hugh Smith. They mix it up. They try it on the ground. Oklahoma says nothing doing this time. Quentin Callum was wrapped up on the play by Dusty Dvorak, the sophomore out of Lake Dallas, Texas. The big 6 3 sophomore. Talk about what a good job the offensive line of South Florida has done all ball game. But Dvoracek skating down the line. 
Goes across the face of his blocker and makes a big play in the backfield. Loss of three, second down and 13. And the Sooner defense getting ready to tee it up now against the Bulls. Here they come. They're bringing a half a load. Pass is complete down to the 45-yard line to Huey Whitaker. His third reception. That was a, just a great read by uh, Markwell Blackwell. And what it's also showing us, this young offensive line doesn't have to hold their blocks that long. No, in this type of offense, because the ball's gone so quickly, it's really a three-step drop out of the shotgun. So it's the equivalent of a seven-step drop, which gave him depth and vision, able to see the field, throws a strike to the sideline. That sets up a third and one. You see what South Florida has done. Make that three out of 12. Teddy Lehman, the weak side linebacker, the junior out of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. He is the speedster from that linebacker spot. That kind of says it all, doesn't it? And remember, they lost Rocky Kalmus, who was a Buckus Award winner last year, signifying the best linebacker or lineman, one of the linemen in the country. And Tommy Harris told us he thought Teddy Lehman was better than Rocky Kalmus even last year. Well, the last time South Florida had fourth down and one, they jumped off sides. They're going for it. Blackwell keeps it, stops, flips over, has got the first down. Lost the ball, but he should have the first down. That is close, but he may be about a ball length away. And that was the first time we saw that play from South Florida tonight where they faked the handoff inside. They've been running the inside handoff to the running back. But this is the first time we saw the counter to that. Watch, fake here, and then he comes out on his own, counting on the defensive end from Oklahoma to crash down and follow the running back. He hit the ground, the ground caused the fumble. First down for USF. And he played by Blackwell. He knew where the stripe was, and he went after it. Well, the official's blowing the whistle. Clock. Has something to do with the clock. Yeah, clock up top, 521. It's showing on the game clock left here in the third. Referee John Robinson checking to his staff. Remember, the referee keeps the time on the field himself, or one of the officials does, so they'll confer with that to make sure the clock is correct. Well, now they're set. Put your, headsets back. Yeah, put your headsets back on, guys. We're still rolling here. First down and 10 from the Oklahoma 44-yard line. Oklahoma has shut out their last two opponents. Well, I should say, have two shutouts this year. Pressing again, Blackwell steps up nicely. Running room takes a shot as he gets to the 40-yard line. Jonathan Jackson running all the way over from that defensive end spot. Jackson, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Is there any doubt that this team can flat out run? This is a defensive end going to chase down a quarterback who has over 1,000 yards rushing in his career. And remember, in college football, sacks take away yardage and they count as yards rushing the football. So having over 1,000 as a quarterback in this offense tells you that Markwell Blackwell can run, but so can Jonathan Jackson. Well, Jackson is the fastest defensive lineman on the Sooners, no question. Blackwell rolling. Trying to buy some time, running out of real estate. Throws it across his body. Incomplete, but we have a penalty at the 50, and that'll probably be holding. And that's the throw they always tell you not to make. Oh, that's Throwing dangerous. back into the middle of the field, rolling to the sideline. If you complete it, you've usually just gotten away with one. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go on a limb here, but Markwell Blackwell is going to be one tired puppy on the play ride home tonight. Yeah, can there be any more ice, please? Yeah. More ice. <laughs> that's right. And they have to have him healthy in order to have a successful rest of the season. This will be the 13th penalty against South Florida tonight. South Florida will uh, be on the road next week. Just a little bit south of here down in Denton, Texas. Take on North Texas. Holding. Offense. 10-yard foul. Repeat second down. Jim Levitt in our super shot. He was talking with a, a South Florida coach, Greg Fry, the offensive line coach, discussing the penalty yardage and what's going on today. Another hold against the 13th penalty, 104 yards against South Florida. Now they've only rushed for 52, so they're double their rushing yardage and penalties tonight. Second down and 17. Ooh, that kind of tells it all right there. It's like man-free coverage. Everyone locked up with a free safety. 
That's what it is, and they bring the linebackers. Blackwell throwing it, has a man. Is it caught? No, incomplete. Great play. Derek Strait, number two, the corner. Used his catch-up speed, read the eyes of the wide receiver, DeAndre Rubin, and put his hand up to make the play without actually seeing the football. As the ball comes down, watch Strait get his arm up. You notice his helmet was looking at DeAndre Rubin, never at the ball. He read the arms and the eyes of Rubin. When his arms came up, he put his hand in his arms, which took away the chance for Rubin catching the ball. Great play by the corner. Derek Strait has everything you look for in a cornerback. Third down and a bunch, 17. Oklahoma bringing six. Blackwell's pass is going to be incomplete. Out of bounds. Almost intercepted by Strait. And Mike Stoops loves it. <laughs> They're up 28 to nothing. They're going to get the ball punted to him. And he's mad because they didn't count it as an interception. Is there any doubt he's a competitor? He wants every big play to go his team's way. Well, they want a sack every 10 passes and an interception every 15. Here's straight. Great back bell. Gets his hips. Now he reads the ball. Great catch. But the officials are saying he didn't have a foot down before he landed out of bounds. Now South Florida forced to kick into the win. And it's a pretty good breeze down on the field right about now. He's got to try and kick it directional. Wants to kick it out of bounds as he did the last one. He's aiming to the right side. Didn't get it. Perkins right at the 16-yard line, 35 yards on the kick, but it's inside the 20. So that would have to be considered a successful kick. Now let's take a look at this week's Jack Daniels original hard cola flashback to take you back to the 2001 Orange Bowl, Oklahoma versus Florida State. Orange Bowl MVP, Torrance Marshall, picks off Chris Winkie in the second quarter, led to an Oklahoma field goal. And then Oklahoma up 6-0, Quentin Griffin with a 10-yard touchdown run, and Oklahoma was on their way to their seventh national title. Josh Heifel carried off the field. They win it 13-2. Josh Heifel's actually in town. Been working out here at Oklahoma the last couple of weeks. They just got cut in the NFL, wanting to see if anyone else is going to pick him up, trying to stay in shape. Griffin on the carry, not much running room. You know, Heifel was one of these guys, and, and Nate Hibble, that was his red shirt year. And he sat there and watched Heifel, and that's part of the problem I think Nate Hibble had. He had to watch Heifel, and he had the hype to follow. Expectations tough. were a monster after Josh Heifel, who emerged on the scene as a junior college transfer and led his team to a national championship. Always hard to step into those shoes, but now Nate Hibble is confident, and this team is now his. And their confidence is showing on this offensive side of the football. Hibble gets away. Just heads to the sideline. Great smart play by the senior out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. Quarterback pressure by Chris Daly. We are in Norman, Oklahoma on a beautiful September evening. We've got about 326 left to play in the ball game. Big play Saturday presented by T-Mobile and Discover Card at Memorial Stadium. I'm Ron Thulin, joined by Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and Aaron Andrews. Third quarter, 326 left to play. Oklahoma leading 28-0, looking for their third shutout of the year. Would love to pick up a first down here in a third long situation again because they want to run their offense and get some repetitions in. Play clock down to two. Nibble keeps it. Takes a slide before Maurice Jones, a junior out of Bradenton, Florida, took off his head. You know, you're probably wondering, Oklahoma's up 28-0. What's Hibble still doing in the game? They start conference play next week with Missouri. Oklahoma has a lot of things they want to work on as they hit into a very difficult stretch. And Missouri under Gary Pinkle had a big win today. A big confidence-boosting win for Missouri. So, you know, they'll come in very hyped up for the ball game. Oklahoma, of course, has to get their game tuned up. And this is one guy who definitely has to get it tuned up. Blake Ferguson oh, yeah. has not had a good night at all. Neither punter really has. Only averaging a shade under 30 yards a kick. This one not much better. Ruben looking for a wall. All he's going to see is a bunch of crimson and white. 43 yards on the kick. Zero on the return. Now our next telecast will come your way next Saturday night at 7 o'clock Eastern as T TBS presents 18th ranked USC traveling to Pullman, Washington to take on the 16th ranked Washington State Cougars. It'll be homecoming in Pullman, and then, of course, one of the great movies, Lethal Weapon 4. I'll be following our game next week. Now let's take a look at some scores from today for these two teams right now. 
SC taking care of Oregon State 19 nothing that's in the fourth quarter that's in Los Angeles Washington State the squeaker over Cal 48 38 I'm surprised at the score of the Oregon State USC game I did not expect Oregon State to be shut out at this point no. of the game Eric Anderson's a good quarterback South Florida keeping it on the ground, and you can hear the pads popping all the way up here. Here's Craig Sager on the sidelines. Well, speaking of shutouts, Jim Levitt told us at halftime he does not believe in moral victories, but he does believe in meeting goals. One of them is not to be shut out. This program in its sixth year has never been shut out in a ball game. Last week they came close, kicking a field goal on the final play before losing to Arkansas 42 to 3. He has challenged his offense to put some points on the board. All right, Craig. He needs to put some points on the board. Got to get a little confidence going here. Vincent Brewer is upended. 5'10 junior just in the ball game, getting a little action tonight. Now the Oklahoma defense, however, on the other side of the coin, they pride themselves in, shut in shutouts. The last time they had three shutouts in one year was back in 1986. And the last time they shut out three of their first four opponents, which Mike Stoops' squad can possibly do, was 1956. And they won a national title that year. And what's amazing was the national championship team of 2000 had zero shutouts. That's right. That's a good. Well, they struggled the first four yes, games. They did. People forget about that. Third down and five. Blackwell firing incomplete into the hands of DeAndre Rubin, and he just could not hang on to it. He also heard the footsteps of Brandon Everidge. And Brandon Everidge has laid the wood to people all night long, both in run support and in the pass game. He's a great, great center field type of a, of a defensive back and also can come up to the line of scrimmage and be that eighth guy in the eight-man front. Excellent tackler. Now set to kick it away again. Devin Sanderson, he's done his job tonight, averaging just about 45 yards a kick. Yeah, the numbers look good, but what Jim Levitt's going to remember that is that one. low punt that led to the run back by Antonio Perkins and also not able to angle it out of bounds a couple of times. Kicking into a stiff wind. Perkins at his 10. This is returnable. Look out. Looking for the corner. Gets up over the 30, up to the 34-yard line. 34 yards on the kick, 12 on the return for Perkins. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features a breakdown of where the Oklahoma Sooners hail from. Oh, when you're this close to Texas, you got to take advantage of that. How about 38 from Texas, 30 from Oklahoma? But look at the numbers from other places also, which tells you what? The Oklahoma Sooners have a national reputation. They can get to the homes of players coast to coast because of who they are. And while the bulk of their recruiting will always come from Texas and Oklahoma, if they want a certain guy from somewhere else, they've got a shot at it. Everyone knows who the Sooners are. Hibble keeps it, steps up in the pocket, and it will be dropped back at the 32-yard line, a loss of about two on the play. Cedric battles the junior out of Coleman, Florida, with his first sack of the year, or first sack of the night, second of the year. And that's where Jim Levitt wants to get to. That's, that's part of the problem of starting a, a, a new program. Number one, you don't have the role models. And number two, you've got to be able to battle Florida, Florida State in Miami in your home state, at least get in the homes. Yeah, and they need those breakthrough guys, guys who would have gone to Florida, Florida State, instead picked USF. Great play by Verpale, the strong safety. Reading the screen and getting up underneath the block of Trent Smith, number 88. And that's the second one tonight he almost picked off. And and watch for Pale on this play, number 17. He's going to read it, and he comes up underneath. See, there's supposed to be a block there. And the block is not able to be executed. Excuse me, that's number 86 for Oklahoma, not number 88. Lance Donnelly. Yes, Lance Donnelly, the backup tight end. He's got to get out there and get that block on the strong safety in order for that play to work. Good read by Verpale, though. Sooners third down and 13. They're only 5 of 11 tonight, much less than what the coaches would like to see. Hibble will change the play, two to snap it. Pass complete, not much. Picked up by Trent Smith. Now let's go to Craig Sager. 
To follow up what you guys were talking about about recruiting, Jim Levitt does not feel he has to go outside the state of Florida to recruit. Last year, 300 high school seniors signed letters of intent to play Division I football out of Florida. 46 alone out of the county of Hillsborough, which is where USF is located. Right now, they feel they have a great recruiting base, and they're hoping to get about 10 of those guys. Right? I think he's well on his way, Craig. That's a great point. That state is just red hot as far as recruits. Listen, this, that state stocks the entire top 25 in the country yeah. with ball players. Not always going to be the bulk of the team, but they're going to go find these guys. Now they weren't able to get the punt off because that's the end of three quarters of play. 15 minutes left to play in Norman, Oklahoma, and on big play Saturday, the Sooners lead the Bulls 28 0. to play in Norman, Oklahoma. Right now, the Sooners lead at 28 to nothing over the Bulls in South Florida. And Oklahoma set to kick it away. When you look at the numbers right now, Oklahoma only seven or more yards offensively than the Bulls of South Florida. Oklahoma only is home 222 yards on the Bulls. Oklahoma is not ready for the University of Texas in two weeks, that's for sure. At least offensively. Bulls bring nine, a high wobbly kick. Fair catch is called for at the 25-yard line. 41 yards on the kick. Let's take a moment and look at our gateway game summary. Tell you what exactly happened. Scoreless in the first, and Oklahoma opened it up with 21 points in the second. Hibble having a nice night tonight, 166 of their 222 total yards. And you can see Oklahoma getting all their points off turnovers. And you look at that 105 yards, and then you take it to the 215 they have in total yardage. South Florida, I tell you, they've got to be, first of all, pleased with their defense. I think they've done a nice job. But second, they know what they have to work on. Well, Kawika Mitchell told us that last week the defense lost a little bit of their poise, too, because some of those situations, if they just made a stop or two and gotten off the field, they could have helped their offense. I think they have to be very proud of what they've done tonight. Blackwell takes a shot in the chest as the pass is incomplete. Intended for Hugh Smith. Well, when you think of national championships here in Oklahoma, you think of my former broadcast partner, Barry Switzer. Barry. Oh, he is all-time winning his coach, three national titles. We saw you on the field with uh, Leroy Selman. What was it like to coach him? Well, I'll tell you, Leroy Selman, as we know and say here at Oklahoma, he's the best player that ever played this place, best player I ever coached. And, uh, hey, Ron Thulin up there, miss you. It was homecoming for Ron tonight. Yeah, yes, it is. I, yeah, it is. Now, Leroy is the greatest role model in the United States today. No one could be a better role model than him. It's amazing. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame, and the Academic Hall of Fame. That's right. I did a great job with him, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I did a great job with him. No, he's a wonderful family. Lucius, I'm sorry he can't be here tonight. The older brother, Dewey, was here. They were three great young men that I was fortunate enough to coach. And obviously, all three All-Americans, outstanding students, outstanding citizens, role model. Oklahoma is very proud of the Selman family. 28 nothing. but what's wrong with the Oklahoma running game? Well, we've struggled. We've struggled for a couple of years. You know, we haven't got answers yet. We've got a great defense, a great punt return. For South Florida's played us off the field tonight, really. Nothing's good has happened for them tonight. Everything's gone against them. But uh, very competitive. The quarterback's very good. But, uh, well, you know, it's a college football's a crazy game today. You know, you, uh, you everyone's in the spread offense. Everybody wants to throw the ball around the field. Nobody lines up, lines up to smash smile football anymore. Running north and south at you. Let's go back to Charles Davis and coach's former broadcast partner, <laughs> Ryan Thulin. Talk about smash mouth. Derek Strait just lowered the boom on him. But you know what I liked about Barry? Still saying we. Oh, you know, we need to play. Hey, he's an Oklahoma guy through and through. You know, look at this. Bud Wilkinson, three national titles, won 145 games here. Barry Switzer matches that with three titles and won in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys. Bob Stoops, second season, a national championship. He wants to join that pantheon of great coaches at Oklahoma. I believe he's a well on his way. Five returns for 120. 12, 112 yards for Antonio Perkins, and he'll get a chance at this one at the 22. Right up the middle, look out! Still on his feet, crosses midfield into the Bulls' territory, down to the 47-yard line. 42, 32 yards on the return. Boy, when he gets the ball in his hands, that is explosive, and Jim Levitt does not like it. 28-0 our score, 13-42 left to play in the ballgame.
Well, welcome back to Norman. These aren't crazed OU fans behind me. They're actually Oklahoma's Roughnecks, the oldest male spirit group in the country. Now, these guys were responsible for pulling me around on that Sooner schooner, but they're also responsible for pumping up this crowd. They slide across the field. They also shoot off guns, which is very interesting because you actually have to be certified to use these guns, which is why I'm not going to use them, but I'm an honorary Roughneck. Boomer Sooner! Now Hebel going for the home run ball. That'll be pass interference. Looks like uh, the South Florida Bulls had some of those roughneck, uh, whatever those things are, those clappers. <laughs> Just about tackled uh, Curtis Fagan. The, those paddles look like what, what a number of my teachers used to carry around. They used to call the Board of Education. That's right. That was called discipline. That was back called then. discipline back then in the roughnecks. And how about Aaron, an honorary roughneck? Ron, she gets all the great honors. She knows how to work it. That's right. Spoken as a true Florida Gator, you, you too. And, you and I would have no chance at <laughs> no. all of becoming an honorary no. roughneck. Not a bit. She's got the class. Pass interference. Defense. 15 yards, previous spot, first down. Well, Jim Levitt said that as we look at this last play, that he was extremely upset after the Arkansas game. Stuff like this will uh, make Coach Levitt even more upset. Yeah, it's just a simple, simple go route to Curtis Fagan. And, and again, Bob Stoops said at halftime, we want to take more shots downfield. <laughs> well, Dewan Brown, the redshirt freshman. Hey, if I'm going to get beat, yeah. it's going to be 15 yards. Here's the shovel pass to Quentin Griffin. Breaks a couple of tackles, gets down to the 20. The shovel pass goes to Quentin Griffin. And I think that's what right now Jim Levitt's looking for. Okay, guys, you know, we're not going to make 28 points up in 13-27. But let's try to improve as a football team right now. Those kind of mistakes, that's going to separate you when you get in Conference USA. And, and again, you mentioned this before, they're going to play four Conference USA opponents this year. Southern Miss, one of the leaders in that conference, actually goes to Tampa in a few weeks to play South Florida. That ought to be a heck of a football game. First down and 10. Oklahoma still trying a running game. Griffin, the ball carrier. Kevin Verpale on the stop, coming He's up from that strong line. safety Kevin spot. Verpale. Now the Oklahoma running game, that is something that the coaches wanted to, to really emphasize tonight with Missouri he coming up next week, Texas in two weeks, we talked about. But they only have 52 yards rushing the football on 27 carries. That's not going to cut it if you're Kevin Wilson and uh, if you're Chuck Long. And one thing to keep in mind also, that this is an attitude that they're trying to bring to a team it's different than what they've played the last few seasons. It's not going to happen overnight. We're going to have to stay with it and still work on being physical every day in practice in order to develop awesome that line. mindset. Well, Kawika Mitchell, his ninth tackle of the game, his Maybe second sack. And there's Kevin Wilson, who Kawika simplified Mitchell. the blocking schemes. Coming from Northwestern, highly successful when he was up there. But he wanted to make things a little simpler and be more aggressive. But I think he's going to say to right now, we need to get, we need to knock it up a couple notches. Well, remember, this is an offensive line that's been in the spread for a few seasons now when Mark Mangino was here. And they were always back on their heels catching rushers coming at them. He wants them punching forward more in the run game and the pass game. Again, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to work at it every day. Now they're 50-50 on pass and run. Pivot. Looking, looking, penalty flag is thrown, pass incomplete at the 28-yard line, intended for Curtis Fagan. It looks like that'll be holding against the Sooners. May go ahead and just decline it. It'll bring up a fourth down and about 21. That's what Jim Levitt's motioning to his defense, decline the penalty. He don't want to give them another shot with all the big play guys that they have. Offense. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. 11:39 to play. South Florida now has their sights set on getting off the Schneid here. 28 to nothing. Bob Stoops' his team. You know he was pretty confident coming into the game, but he also knew that his goal is just to improve every week. They don't look ahead to anybody. And it's fourth and long, and Oklahoma will go for it here because they don't see the sense of trying to punt. Not into the wind. From the plus 32, and that hasn't exactly been a strong point of their game tonight anyway. That would be a 49-yard field goal. And the long Short kick. 44, a little pooch kick. That's going to work. 
Curtis Fagan, Johnny on the spot, down to about the two-yard line. Nate Hibble has done it all. 29 yards on the punt. Marquell Blackwell had two punts like that earlier in his career where he's dropped them inside the five-yard line. There's Nate Jonathan Hibble Hayes. joins it. Jonathan Hayes, the special teams coach, great player in his own right. So the Sooners with 11.33 to play. They lead it by four TDs. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. South Florida with their back to the wall of the first and ten line is at the 13-yard line as they have first and ten from the three. Marco Blackwell standing in his own end zone. Can't afford a bad snap here out of the shotgun. Watch Teddy Lehman. Here he comes. Pass incomplete. Almost intercepted. Derek straight right on DeAndre Rubin. Great job by Derek Strait closing on the quick slant route. They've been sitting on that route for a while. Watch Derek Strait break to the upfield arm of the receiver. It's going to be a slant right in this area. And boom. Great play. Derek Strait. Lance Mitchell split right between Alex Heron and Chris Carruthers. So being able to sit back in zone blitz, zone coverage as the zone blitz scheme allows the defensive backs to play forward rather than retreat. Sooners just corralling Clinton Crossley, the sophomore out of Bushnell, Florida. How much leeway does it give you if you've got a front four like Oklahoma has with Jackson Klein Harrison Wilkinson your linebackers can do a little more can't they yeah, they can do a lot of things because they can step back and actually get more depth behind their line because they know the line will control the front that allows them to flow to the football without getting caught up in traffic that doesn't cut it. you're 10.1 yards away on third down that's that's not going to do it against Oklahoma. And that's down from 13 earlier uh, in the game. That's true. Four, <laughs> third down and 10 again. Blackwell throws it into the flat, in and out of the hands of the Andrew Rubin. I'll tell you, Blackwell had a little mustard on that ball, considering he has been running for his life the whole night. Still got some pump left in there. And, and South Florida's caught the ball better tonight than they did against Arkansas. But that's one of those ones that the Andrew Rubin needs to catch because he would have had a first down. Help them get out of a hole. And I bet we have a new punter now for South Florida. And we do. It is Brandon Baker. Antonio Perkins is just 10 yards off the OU Can't record. And it's tipped. Knocking around and OU will get great field position. The market at the 36 yard line. Let's go to Ernie Johnson. Hey, thank you, Ron. Next week here on TBS, we've got USC at Washington State. USC tonight taking on Oregon State, and it's been all Trojan so far. Carson Palmer to Mike Williams. By the way, Oregon State's Derek Anderson, the number two rated passer in the country, just eight out of 30 for 80 yards last time I checked. Take it away. <laughs> wow. First big game for the, for the young right. sophomore. Welcome to Pac-10 to play. I think Terrence Sims got a piece of that ball. The senior out of Bell Glades, Florida. Played a little junior college ball at Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. Bell Glade, they play a little football at that oh, high school yeah. in Florida. Always in the state championship mix. Now Hibble and company, they want more. Pumps, throws, has a man in the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Curtis Vegas. Same route they completed for a touchdown to Will Peoples. Pump and go, throwing it to the outside. Fagan tries his best to lay out as Will Peoples did earlier in the ball game. This time he's unable to catch it. Maurice Tucker on the coverage. Now we're still wanting to figure out if Paul Thompson, the true freshman out of Leander, Texas, will get back in the ball game. Let's go to Craig Sager. Well, the coaching staff wanted to play Paul Thompson. They're hoping to have a big lead so he could get some more experience. But the problem is that the offense has not been moving to their satisfaction with Nate Hibble. And with all the times in the past that Hibble has lost his job or been benched, they do not want to do anything whatsoever to shake his confidence, which very well could happen if Thompson, no. who is very talented, comes in the field, moves the team, and the crowd gets behind him. Here's a young man. We see Paul Thompson, just a true freshman. They took his red shirt. And what a great report by Craig because that's part of the game within the game that you don't hear about and standing next to him do we know that guy right there who just Jason passed White. the coach Jason White the starting quarterback this year blew out his knee for the second time what a courageous young man he is he tried his best to come back from two ACL operations but you know Juan Jones abs are popping as he gets inside the 20s 
Well, Jason White came into this year as the starting quarterback, much to the dismay of Nate Hibble, but this was back in 2001 against Nebraska. He just pulls up without being hit. The left knee, torn. And then against Alabama, runs to his right, run of the option, pulls up again, and it's the other knee. It's the right knee. And nobody hit him either, but. And what you always hear about is those types of injuries happening on artificial turf. The turf in Nebraska is that new stuff that plays like grass, a much softer surface that players like when you hear about them playing on it. The second injury occurred right here on natural grass. That's right. You talk about bad luck for a guy. How about surfaces that are supposed to protect the player? Now, Kawika Mitchell stops the third down in one attempt. He has been in just about every play. That is unofficially his 10th tackle tonight. He already has a couple of sacks and four tackles for a loss. I'd say this young man is a player. And we've mentioned before that his dad, Charles, in Hawaii, watching him for the first time on TV. Give your son a call. He's done yeoman's work tonight. He really has. What a great, what a great debut for that young man. As Oklahoma gets ready for a field goal attempt into the wind. They're going to spot him right about the 29-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard attempt. Trey to Carlos Carl now four of five on field goal attempts for the year. And the Sooner lead is up to 31. Big Play Saturday is presented by T-Mobile and Discover Card. Once again, we're inside Memorial Stadium, Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, along with Charles Davis, Craig Saker, and Aaron Andrews, and the Sooner Sooner. I'm Ron Doolin. The Oklahoma Sooners trying to hold on to that number two ranking. They have not been efficient offensively. 223 total yards, and as a matter of fact, right now, South Florida has outgained them in the ballgame. The difference, South Florida mistakes, penalties, and timely plays by the Oklahoma Sooners. The OU defense has played well though. Yeah, and, and I want to go back to the, the great information Craig Sager gave us about why Paul Thompson, the freshman, is not coming into the ball game. The game within the game, confidence for Nate Hibble, so important. You know, it's fragile for a quarterback, a guy who had a confidence, you know, a confidence crisis last year. That's right. Off flank. They don't want to go back to that again. And Paul Thompson is so talented, he can go in and make some things happen. And then what do you have? Fans calling for Paul Thompson and a quarterback controversy, something this team doesn't need. Ruben from the two takes a hit as he crosses the 20-yard line up to about the 22-yard line. Gayron Allen, the redshirt freshman out of Orange, Texas, comes up to make the big-time stop. That's for South Florida won't take over. Now they have a goal of not being shut out. I like it. Look at Jim Love. You see Jim Love there? Just yeah, coaching. Just coaching. Coach up. Because he knows it pays dividends down the road. He knew in his heart of hearts that coming here and winning a game is probably not in the cards. But let's not lose this game and games after it by not coaching up my guys. Let's get them ready to go for next week at North Texas, a team that went to a bowl last year. Blackwell pump fakes, looking deep on the right side, not going to find anybody as he is just swarmed over on the play. Thought he had his eyes on Huey Whitaker. Now the South Florida team has not lost consecutive games since 1998. Coming in tonight, they were 13-0 following a loss. Last time they did lose back to that, Hofstra. Yes. Back in 98. But the problem is they're 1-17, trailing at the end of three. That hurts. All part of the maturation process of his young full squad. On second and ten, they try the right side. Crossley maybe got up to the 25-yard line. It's like Oklahoma has a number of backups into the game now on defense, giving these guys some experience. Got to have them get some playing time just in case they have to step up. See Jackie Ship, former Oklahoma Sooner. Another All-American. Yeah. Great linebacker here for the Sooners. Okay, Coach Stoops assembled uh, quite a staff. Third down and nine. Blackwell. Has some running room, has his sights set on the first down marker, and he is going to be about a yard short. 
That's the classic Oklahoma speed. Lynn Magruder coming from that defensive tackle spot and also Juwan Cote out of the quarterback spot, closing so quickly on Blackwell. Even when you go to the second line of defense for Oklahoma, the backup guys, they close as fast as the first guys do. That's why this defense re reloads. They don't rebuild. They have guys to plug in at every position. Now well, the new punter's still in there. Low snap. Trying to kick away from Perkins, and he does it. He booms it. My goodness. That's about five rows up. Keep the ball. Go ahead. So I said it was all right. <laughs> he knows what Jim Levin wants. That's right. Excellent job by Brandon Baker, but his team still trails by 31. Funny? Check out the non-stop comedy block. The Drew Carey Show, Home Improvement, Friends, and Seinfeld. Finally all in one place. CBS Superstation's non-stop comedy block. Premier Tuesday. No wonder they call it the Superstation. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He was supposed to be here an hour ago. Can anyone here play the bass? Oh. Is there a bass player in the house? Original hard cola, a premium malt beverage as unique as the people who drink it. Come as you are. Oh, wow. Today's tech special: Bulldog Brisket. Rivalries ain't college football great. Play NCAA football 2003 EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. Hey, check out what's coming to TBS. Can't seem to find what you're looking for? We handpicked an afternoon light up your gonna be. TBS Superstation's non-stop comedy block. Forget it October first. No wonder they call it the Superstation. side of Owen Field. Nate Hibble apparently is done for the evening because they brought in the young two freshman, Paul Thompson, a big 6 185 pounder, had a very impressive drive late in the game against UTEP. A lot of people questioned it, but it did show the talent of this young man. Throws it out on the flat, pass is complete up to about the 45-yard line. Lance Donnelly jumps into South Florida and says they've got it. And they do! Donnelly had it and lost it, and South Florida comes up with it. DeJuan Brown, the redshirt freshman out of El Glade, Florida, with his first fumble recovery of the year. And watch for Pale, the strong safety number 17, pull the ball out. Reach, reach, bang, and then Kawiko Mitchell, number five, with a big hit, knocked it completely free. See right there, see if he's going to work on the ball. He's going to work on it, work on it, work on it. Now watch the hit, bam! Mitchell, ball comes straight. South Florida has it. How many big plays has Kawika Mitchell been at last night, huh? And that's why he is on the Buckets watch list. He can flat out play a four-year starter here after transferring from Georgia. South Florida picking up a turnover. That's the first Oklahoma turnover in three games. Last two, they didn't have any. Defense is up to the challenge. Juwan Green went nowhere quickly on the play. Big Lynn Magruder, the sophomore transfer out of Las Vegas, Nevada, on the stop. Now, fans, check out the instant poll results. And the question tonight was, can Oklahoma win another national championship this season? Now most of you say no. 43% said yes, 57% said no. Blackwell looking, takes a hit. On the right side of the stand, seeing more balls than some of the USF receivers. Pass is incomplete. I, I'll tell you what, Blackwell is a warrior, isn't he? 
Yeah, and we use that word so often with so many different guys. It applies to this guy. You know, he, he doesn't have all the measurables. When you look at Blackwell and his numbers in terms of size and you know size and weight, I mean, they only list him as 6'1", 205, and we met him yesterday, and we don't think he's 6'1". No. You know, <laughs> we don't think that at all. He takes the hits, he keeps getting up, he keeps guiding his team. Now he faces third and long again. That's going to start in that 30 15 as he pulls in on six to play. Pat it down. That was like a spike from the OU volleyball team. Dan Cody, all six, five of them, sophomore out of Ada, Oklahoma. And Levi Newton was blocking on him from South Florida, number 79. Didn't get his hands down. Watch 79. He's engaged with him up high to the left of your screen. But on this type of a play, you've got to find a way to get his hands down and him out of the way so that Blackwell has a throwing lane. Oftentimes, you go up high, you go up high initially, and you come down and chop him down. Didn't happen. Brandon Baker will kick again. It's third of the evening. He's going to angle up for the sidelines, Ron. He better. <laughs> he, won't, he won't see next week. They might have gotten a piece of that one. I think they did. Stops dead at the 21-yard line. <laughs> I think Terrence Sims again got in. That is his second block. Second time he's got his hand on something. He's trying to earn himself some playing time. Well, let's take a look at tonight's All-State Good Hands play. Yeah, who do you think it is? Got to be Will Peoples. Earlier in the ball game, a little slant and go off the pump fake. Laid out, he's doing the excellent hands. All state, good hands play the game. All five of his receptions in that opening half, wasn't it? Yes, you, you said the beginning of the game. He's a guy they're asking to step up. He answered the challenge. Got a little breakdown. Welcome to college football, Paul. It's not always going to be as easy as the drive against UTEP, is it? No. <laughs> he's got his uni dirty, though. He's ready. See, he's yeah. got the grass on him now. This is good for him. He needs to get out there and not have much success every time so he understands mm -hmm. the hard work it takes to get to that level. Well, the bottom line is, too, I think you're coming up with this, the meat of the schedule right now. If you're Bob Stoops, you're a little concerned that you have no experience back on the quarterback. Brett Rawls is supposed to be there. He's hurt. Will be out another six weeks? This young man, the onus is on him. Nelson throws it out of the top to Jones, who trips his way up to the 20-yard line. Steps out of bounds. So you've got to get Thompson some reps. And behind him is another true freshman, Noah Allen, from Maryland, Texas. So two true freshmen could be your the keys to your future. Nice swing pass. An excellent tackle by USF, diagnosing the play. Now Thompson facing third down and 11, inside of five minutes to play in the ballgame. And what do the coaches tell us that they like most about him? His presence. Yeah. You know how he handles a huddle, his maturity. Takes control of things. Thompson looks over the middle, pass a little behind his intended receiver. Brandon Jones, the sophomore out of Texarkana, did make the reception, his third catch of the year. Brandon Jones, quite an athlete, also the center fielder for the Oklahoma baseball team. That's quite a feat because the Oklahoma baseball team plays for titles, too. Oh, yeah. Drafted by the Yankees, so you know the young man's got some talent. That'll bring up about two yards short. Here's Brandon Jones. Guy's got a little stick, doesn't he? That's called yard, my friend. <laughs> they didn't even move, did they? Just turned and watched it. That's a sweet swing. Here's a little extra base knock for Oklahoma. Nice gapper. Look at the size of him, too. He's got some thighs on him. Yeah, how'd you like to be the second baseman him and oh. watch him come roaring around? Let's go back to the big game house in Ernie Johnson. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you, Ron Thulin. We're going to have highlights of Iowa State's win and Iowa's win today. They're all happy in Iowa because those were two big victories today. That's after the game. And then, of course, it's the movie bowl with my buddy Sheree Christian and Matt Arnold. Yeah, what you got tonight, uh, we got a scores, highlights, updates Aww. coming out through the night, and a cool movie again. Now yeah, we have Coming to America with Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. I've seen it. Uh, it's even better than the book. Uh, back to you, Ron. <laughs> well, what's the over and under on Ernie staying for the movie? Yeah? Uh, zero no chance for Ernie, no chance for what did he say? <laughs> I'll be in the car before you start to roll it. That's right. And how, how do you how do say, like it better than the book? Yeah. Oh, boy, Ernie. You know, we see Nate Hubble there and Jim Levitt always coaching. He knows even though there's four or nine left to play, he'd like to see his team get something going here. On the offensive side of the football, he'll get it back, have some time to try to get that zero off the scoreboard. 
We had Leroy Seltman here with us for a while in early in the third quarter. Jim Levin gives so much credit to Leroy Seltman coming to South Florida, and that's why they have football. He said if he, Leroy Seltman hadn't showed up, there probably wouldn't be football in South Florida. But a great relationship between those two. Now that's going to be the handle roll finally. Ferguson's punt is fielded at about the 37-yard line. And Ruben is dropped after about a return of about three, but we have a bunch of hankies laying all over the field. Tries to pull up. Boy, this is hard to do. But, but, but what he has to do is break down a lot earlier. See, he's playing high. What I mean by playing high is he's standing almost straight up when he's running. When we say break down, get into a football position, bend your knees. You know, when they say bend your knees, drop your butt yeah. towards the ground so that you're able to go in any direction. He's Kick running so high. Race. Kicking team, 10 yard foul, first down. See, he's running so high, even if he breaks down in time or he slows down in time, he's not in a good enough position to stop his body. Thus, he runs into the, uh, the receiver. Well, tonight's question comes from Devin out of Tampa, Florida. The question is, how is Leroy Sullivan's son, Leroy Jr., doing down at USF? Well. Kind of blew out the ACL playing hoops. Kind of a little hoops. You know, all the football players get their basketball jones. Everybody wants to tell them how great they were in high school. You know, I was a player. Yeah, and Leroy Selman ended up blowing out his knee. This is in a quarterback now for USF. We weren't even expecting him to play. We thought David Mullins or Ronnie Banks had come into the lineup for the Bulls. Yeah, we've seen Fisher as a wide receiver. You know, he was the guy who threw the, the, the half back the pass off of the lateral that wasn't a lateral. Well, now Mark Bull. Now Mark Bull is out. Does this Banks come into the game now? Now it's Ronnie Banks, the 6'3 uh, sophomore out of New Orleans, Louisiana. They must, must have Fisher in for a special play. And it wasn't so special. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Chris Iskra. The junior out of Clearwater, Florida, getting a little playing time. You take a look at Ronnie Banks. And that was only his fourth pass of the year. The sophomore out of New Orleans. It's another big one at 6'3", 240 pounds. Actually, on the depth chart, he kind of flip flops with David Mullins, the true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, Banks just got back to number two last week. And to close the book on the question about Leroy Selman Jr., he's played well when he's been able to play at USF. And Leroy told us yesterday his rehab is going very well. He expects him back on the field next season. Third down and nine for Banks. Looking into the flat. Pass is complete, but coming back short of the first down. Looks like Chris Isker. Oh, Boy, spot. he got a great spot. <laughs> My goodness, he was he was coming back, and the official was very lenient on that. Nice strike throw by Banks. Sets up in the pocket strong. Beautiful throw to the sideline. See where Isker looks a little bit short of the marker from this angle. You know, hard for me to see it where he was, but I didn't think there's any doubt he was short of the marker. But he did get a good spot. Now Banks trying to move the team. Went to Lawless High School. Going to keep it on the ground. Oh, my! Vince Brewer, welcome to Oklahoma, my friend. Vince Brewer. That's, here's Aaron Andrews. Okay, Ron, well, when we got to the state uh, stadium today, an Oklahoma fan actually brought this in. It's TBS's own Joe Simpson. Of course, he played baseball here in Oklahoma, and right now, Joe is in New York with the Atlanta Braves. I know he really, really wanted to be here because I actually got a call from him on Thursday night telling me all the joints to hit here at Norman. Gotta say, guys, Joe Simpson, a hottie. Yeah, he, was, he was a legend here. Trust me, Banks throws in the flat, incomplete right into the hands of Huey Whitaker. In fact, the baseball field is now part of the practice field here in Oklahoma, right behind us, where Joe became a legend. And nice, nice glasses, though. How about, how about the specs? It was good. It almost looked like one of the Hanson brothers from the movie <laughs> Slapshot. You know? Let's Check it out. Look, look at this. All he needed right there was the tape, right? Right right in the middle of the glasses, and you got one of the Hansons. He has no neck, does he? <laughs> you, uh, no neck usually means a football player. Yeah. What a great baseball player. They speak very fondly of Joe Simpson here in the athletic department at Oklahoma. Banks going up top, wants to put something on the board, and it is caught. Down at the three-yard line, Huey Whitaker. What a pass by Ronnie Banks. 39 yards on the reception. That's what 6'5", 225 does for you, as well as dropping the last pass. Remember, Dewey Whitaker dropped one and hit it between the one and the five. 
He wanted to atone for that. He just went up and got it. Just took it from the defensive back to Juan Poti. Yeah. Right over the top. That's what a coach says. Who wants the ball more? Huey Whitaker did. Now, you're a defensive player. What's this do if you're Oklahoma right now? You've got the big goose egg on a scoreboard with 233. Yeah, your, your defense is telling them you got to get the shutout, guys. We've been working for it all game long. Don't give it up. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. By Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. By the Home Depot, driving down the cost of home improvement. And by Gateway, you've got a friend in the business. Closing minutes here in Norman, Oklahoma. The number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners. The only thing in question right now is whether or not they'll get the shutout with 233 to play. Leading 31 to nothing. Ronnie Banks subbing for Markwell Blackwell, who did Yeoman's work tonight. Didn't uh, get a whole lot of help, though. Now you can see in their six-year history, their brief six-year history, never been shut out. Oklahoma looking for their third of the year to retire. They did back in 1986. I know that the starting defense for Oklahoma wanted to go back in and lobby, but the second guy they have to battle their way out of this tough situation. Although I do see Sasha Jackson, number 53, normally a starting linebacker, now in the game hasn't been able to play much because they've been five defensive backs most of the night. Straight ahead running, nothing. Vince Brewer. Brewer, not a whole lot of running room. And just a reminder, next week we've got a dandy coming your way from Poland, Washington, Washington State, home to host USC. Both teams look like they're going to win tonight. How about Carson Fuller, the disappointing loss last week against Kansas State? Yes, sir, you can see his numbers. Second and goal. Thanks, keeps, looks, touchdown, USF! Feldman with the touchdown, and they're off the slide. A tight end, a sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida. His first catch of the year, and it goes for a touchdown. Not too bad. Beautiful play because it's misdirection. The tight end will cross back this way against the grain off of the misdirection. Good job booting it out by Banks. Good protection. Easy throw. Here's Martin Gramatica's little brother, Santiago Gramatica. Good hold. Good kick. And Santiago makes it seven for USF inside of two minutes. Another Automatica Gramatica. He's still perfect on extra points. Now 12 for 12 on the year. Here's that touchdown again. Watch, fake inside, and he boots out. All direction goes to the flow goes right, and Feldman, number 44, lined up on the right side as the tight end, crossed across the faces of the defense, flowing left. Found the open spot. That's one of the easier throws that Ronnie Banks will be able to make. Touchdown, USF. Well, that's the second touchdown pass of Banks' career. First this year, take a look at the scoring drive. Only took two minutes to go 51 yards. First aided by the big play, Huey Whitaker coming up with a big reception. And that was the first play of the night for USF that was over 25 yards. Yeah. The first big play they had on offense. That's yeah. what Oklahoma likes to They don't want those plays plus 20. No. Now that's, that'd be what, that'd be what, what Mark Stoops and Brett Venables will use to, 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 excuse me, Mike Stoops, excuse me, to build on in practice this week. Be able to say, listen, we didn't get the shutout done because yeah. we gave up a big play late. And what do we talk about all the time? Preventing big plays. So they're going to get the win, but they'll be able to coach all week long, too. Oh, so yeah. coaches, for them, this is the best of both worlds, isn't it? That's right. Get the W, but you have plenty to work on. Christian Geisler will kick it away. He has not been a missing man tonight. 159 to play in the ball game. Oklahoma now setting their sights on Missouri next week. going to go out of bounds right at the 16-yard line. Stay tuned. TBS Superstation after the game. Even more fun. Matt and Sheree are standing by. They're going to have their usual post-game party. Plus, that coming to America with Eddie Murphy. That'll be immediately following the game on the movie boat. Only on the TBS Superstation.
Akeem. Akeem. That's right. Going to find his queen in Queens, New York, from the island of Zamunda. How about coming to America with Santiago Gramatica and Frank Davis? They've come to America. My dad was born in Panama. Oh, I'm sorry. My father's name is Frank Davis, too. Always yeah. run into that. It's a small world. It's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. <laughs> well, you hear the discussion going down on the field. Yeah, who's in, who's out? Yeah. Knowing your groupings. And these are the things coaches remember, too. What's your concentration level as the game winds down? Now, they don't want to know that you're taking tape off and already unhooking your shoulder pads. Now, the reason Oklahoma got in this bad field position instead of the penalty on the kickoff is they fielded it and then stepped out of bounds. Well, let's take a look at OU's schedule now. OU fans and UT fans, and I do mean University of Texas fans, all due respect, Charles. Yes. They've got, they've got the October 12th circle, but, you know, I asked Bob Stoltz. I'll circle it for you. Yeah, Actually, I'll destroy it right yeah. now. I said, it's October 12th. I said, Bob, you know, everybody's pointing towards it. He goes, not us. No, and, 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 and what he meant by that was that's not part of the progression. The progression is the next opponent. And I don't live 24-7 worrying about Texas. We worry about Texas when it's time for Texas. And you have to believe that silently, what he was saying yeah. is we have an emotional advantage over them anyway. They're chasing us yeah. because of these number of years recently where everyone thought Texas would beat them, and it hasn't happened. Of course, Texas a big winner over Tulane. Shut them out today. That would be a heck of a game, as always, between those two. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Oklahoma, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the University of Oklahoma or the Big 12 Conference. So these are some educated fans here, partner. They already they know about the movie bowl. They know the movie coming up next. And they know what disseminated means. How about that? Pass is incomplete. Intended for Brandon Jones, a young sophomore out of Texarkana, Texas. That'll bring up a 4-9-7 to the Zoomers. Another punt attempt for Blake Ferguson. I tell you, he struggled tonight, and that's something you'd have to be concerned about. You've had nine punts, and you're only averaging just about two and a half yards. And they just haven't looked good either. No. I mean, that's, that's even worse. I mean, they have just been bad punts. So he's got a lot of work to do as they get ready for Missouri also. Andrew Ruby standing on his own 43-yard line. Ruby's going to let this one drop. Tail drag and bounce back. They're saying it hit one of the South Florida players, but I didn't see it. It didn't look like it hit him. They're going to mark it on the 48-yard line. We thought it hit Brown, but I don't think it did. I don't believe it did either. 30 yards on the kick, and nevertheless, USF will take over. It was close, but not that close. No. Take a look as it comes down with those tail draggers, which will bounce back towards the kicking team. Then again. <laughs> and again, yeah. And again. Was... Oops. On second look. <laughs> Maybe we do need it, huh? Maybe, maybe it should be going to Oklahoma, but I don't think anyone's going to spend much time protesting now. So no. we'll get the last 24 seconds over with it. Now they lost the shutout. Banks is going to put it up again, throws a rope, and it is complete. Into the hands of Ryan Hurd, who pays, pays for it, hit by Michael Thompson. Well, USA Today is the place for a comprehensive look at sports. Get all the latest scores, stats, standings, and game recaps to keep you up to date with your favorite teams and players. Number 20 on the play, final 15 seconds of the ball game. Low snap, pass over the middle, pass is complete to her touchdown! My goodness! The Oklahoma defense has fallen asleep. Ah, Ryan Hurd with a touchdown, his first of the year. The senior out of Ocala, Florida. This is a rope thrown by Banks. Watch Ryan Hurd just working vertically up the center of the field and a beautiful throw by Banks. Catches it between the linebackers and the safety. And the extra point. Romanica, it is good. Now people are going to look at the score and say it was a pretty close game. 
Another cosmetic touchdown, but one that South Florida will take with them to Tampa as a feel-good gesture, feel-good measure. They go in with two touchdowns in the last couple of minutes of this game. And for Jim Levitt, he'll love the fact that his team battled all the way down the stretch. That's right. On the other side, you're talking about the defensive coordinator, the coordinators for uh, Oklahoma. So about Mike Stoops and Brett Venables. They'll have a few things to say to their guys. Well, let's take a look at tonight's regular five-star play of the game. And yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. It's Antonio Perkins on the punt return. I'll tell you, he's got some zip. That's a special weapon. Got his, got his season off to a roaring start at Tulsa in a 91-yard return. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Now we have five ticks left on the clock. I wonder how much of this game is going to be on the USF highlight tape when they go recruiting. Oh, the two touchdowns, <laughs> the two touchdowns some, will be. Some good defense. Some of the hits by Kawika Mitchell will be on there. You know, the fumble that they caused. There are enough plays tonight that they can stop their highlight film. Oh, yeah. Set it to some nice music, make it look good, up-tempo. This can only help them. This will do it. Perkins. Up the middle, over the 20, and that's going to do it. All the centers are going to keep their record perfect. They go to 4 0 on the air, but the upstart goals of South Florida. They gave Oklahoma everything they could handle. In fact, South Florida ends up outgaining Oklahoma by almost 100 yards on the offensive side of the football. South Florida falls to 2 and 2 on the year. Jim Levitt, Bob Stoops, coaching teammates at Kansas State. Let's go down to Craig Sager. Well, this game was scored this early second quarter until Antonio Perkins fielded a punt, ran it 81 yards for a touchdown. How surprised were you that they kicked the ball to you? What did you see when you got it? Well, I'm not surprised they're kicking it. A lot of people are kick it still just because I returned a couple. I don't mean anything want to do that game, so we're expecting to get a lot of kicks to it in my return, so we just come out there ready to block and go for it. If it wasn't for the great field position, the turnovers and the punt return, could have had a different story here today. Yeah, South Florida came out. They were a very good team. They came out ready to play. And, um, we covered them what we could. And the special teams helped us out a lot. And they set us up with a couple of um, scoring chances. So we just come out and work our special teams harder next week. You got a couple of shots already this year. The first team was on the bench. Your backups were in there. How bad did you guys want this shit out? We wanted to shut out. We won our third one in four games. So we didn't get it. So we look forward to next week. So we get a shutout next week. Are you ready for the Big 12? Yeah, we're ready for the Big 12. All right, great game today. Thanks. Back to running, Charles. All right, thanks. Excellent effort by Peoples and also by Perkins. And the Sooners win at 31-14. We'll be back to normal Oklahoma. Wrap things up in a moment. Stay with us. And the precocious freshman from the Columbus campus of Ohio State has created a cult following all over the country. Confident and cool, compiling staggering statistics, widening the chasm between himself and all others in college football. Come with us as we chronicle his continued convincing climb towards greatness. He and the Buckeyes have their crosshair set on the catch just a cool breeze away from Chicago. Kickoff is coming first to Matt Weiner in the studio. Hi, thank you very much, and welcome to our college football studio, Matt Weiner and Mark May. And, you know, there are 13 unbeaten teams when the day began, two of them already beaten, one in trouble as we speak. Ohio State trying not to become the third or fourth unbeaten to go down tonight. And, and of those two upsets already, still don't compare to the biggest upset of the day, which happened in Oxford, Mississippi. David Cutlets, Ole Miss team taking on number eight, Florida. Gator strike first, Rex Grossman, Carlos Perez, second touchdown connection between those two. Florida 14-2 at the half, and here come the Rebels. Vashon Pearson up the gut, five-yard TD. Ole Miss tacks on the two-pointer. Florida's lead cut to four. Turnovers, Mark, killed oh. the Gators. In the double coverage, Matt Gear the strong, Greer, the strong safety, takes it, runs it into the end zone for the score, pick six, Mississippi. 11 penalties for Florida didn't help them either, and the goalposts come down in Oxford. They are celebrating tonight. 17-14, biggest win for the Rebels in I don't know how long. Off. They talked to his parents and his Outside. dad about it and said, you know, is it okay? We're going to take this red shirt off him. Here's a young man with a great deal of talent. He's getting better and better. And what a great report. You got to look at your punting game, which didn't go very well tonight. Blake Ferguson didn't hit the ball very well. And your running game. Kevin Wilson was hired to get more punch in the offensive line. That hasn't happened. 
So he's going to be working awfully hard beginning again this week. Yeah, but a win is a win. It'll start to work tomorrow. For the latest scores, in-depth analysis, CNNSI.com. Sports Illustrated at CNN Speed. And our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern on CBS as 18th-ranked USC travels to Pullman to take on the 16th-ranked Washington State Cougars. And Big Play Saturday continues with the Movie Bowl as Eddie Murphy takes you on a hilarious journey in Coming to America. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and Aaron Andrews and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Norman, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma Sooners win at the final 31-14. Now let's send it back to EJ at the Big Game House. South Florida also against Oklahoma. South Florida punting. Antonio Perkins fielding. And away you go. A lot of punts going on. Anytime there's a fourth down, teams are going to have to punt. 81 yarder, Oklahoma up 7 0. Later in the second, 14 0. DeWan Green to carry. Hit hard. Antonio Perkins got into it. Jonathan Jackson recovers. Ensuing drive. Nate Hibble looking for a person. Found Will Peoples. Laying out, 21-0, Oklahoma wins it, 31-14. Oklahoma against South Florida, the Sooner Schooner. They, of course, had their share of injuries. Lost Jason White earlier, and backup Brent Rawls has been hurt as well. Antonio Perkins, he appears to be the picture of health against the Bulls. Yeah, that's 81 yards. Yeah, he, he's got some wheels. They've got a few guys with some wheels, but... You know, they find a receiver all over the place. You see Perkins bringing one back, but then here's the receiver we're talking about, Will Peoples. He's a freak. He's a freak. Ooh. But how about having Nate Hibble as a backup quarterback? I mean, he throws the deep ball better, in my opinion, than Jason White did. Nice to have a backup as good as Nate Hibble. He has won a lot of games as a starter, and he stepped in nicely, responsible for a couple of touchdowns. Stoops team now 4-0 after the 31-14 victory. But this early part of the season has done nothing, gentlemen, if not shake things up on at least those who we thought that were going to be good coming into the season and some of those teams certainly have been others have struggled a little bit our college game day guys Chris Fowler Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet here to break that down Chris well either the pollsters and the coaches poll were way off preseason about the 10 best teams in America or parity has reached an all-time high because seven of the preseason top 10 teams already have at least a loss Colorado Nebraska now with two losses the top three of course remain unblemished now where do we go from here because some of these teams Tennessee wanted a big bounce back didn't get it Michigan all of a sudden got a big performance against Illinois today but out of those teams who's headed up I don't want to talk about one of those teams I want to talk about Ohio State because right. they were not in that league and they should have been now Ohio State is the best football team in the Big Ten if they can improve their passing they can kick it they can run it and they can play defense and I don't think the Big Ten's as strong I think they got a chance Kirk to run the table in the Big Ten and get 50 percent of that fiesta bowl <laughs> that would be huge, but they're going to have to win some big games on the road. Of course, the big one for Ohio State is at Madison against Wisconsin. Of course, Miami, the winner of the Texas-Oklahoma game. But I think there's a team beyond Ohio State, besides Ohio State, I think you also have to think about Kansas State. Favorable schedule, big game for the Wildcats next week in Boulder against Colorado. After that, their two biggest games are at home, Texas and Nebraska at home. If they were able to run the table, if they beat Colorado, I think Kansas State will be undefeated going into the Big 12 championship game if they can beat CU. Now, usually there's wildness in November. There's a lot of wildness in September. I still stand by it. won't be two undefeated teams. It could be right. Okay. All, right. All right. What really stood out for you today? Well, first, uh, Seneca Wallace from Iowa State was this tremendous quarterback. In fact, in my opinion, he goes to number one in my Heisman list. And listen to this. Texas, Oklahoma, and Virginia Tech, top five teams, all pitched shutouts. Yo, impressive. Impressive and I'm on with defense. You, I'm with you with Seneca Wallace. You're right. Nah. You said it this morning. If he was able to win this game, and I think a lot of people agreed, if he could pull off the victory against Nebraska, he goes to the top of the chart because there's really nobody else out there that's grabbing a hold of it. Another thing that stood out to me is tonight's game by USC. The Trojans dominated Oregon State. Pete Carroll has his team determined. Every time they go out, they give great effort. That's something that's been lacking the last couple years. Chris Carlisle is their new strength and conditioning coach the last couple years, doing a good job. 
it's, it, USC's always had talent, but when they start showing up determined and playing hard in the trenches, that team is dangerous. They look very good today. They showed heart at the end of that game, coming up short at Kansas State, and yes, a ton did. of heart against Oregon State. And the it's fundamental truth there. remains in the Pac-10. Oregon State does not win at the Coliseum. That's right. That's great, great performance that. by USC. Yes, and I think sir. Kentucky as well. They didn't want moral victories, but that was a gutsy performance at the Swamp Absolutely. and a losing effort by the Wildcats. Reese?